Oh boy, oh howdy, oh, Bob. Oh, oh boy. Oh, 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 oh hello. Good golly, Miss Molly <laughs> me. How are we doing today, everybody? How is everybody doing? Welcome to the Wolf Den Podcast. How are you? Me? How is everyone? I thought you were doing that from the bathroom. Oh, I'm just yelling in the bathroom? <laughs> <laughs> There's concerns for my health here in the apartment. <laughs> yeah. How are you? Uh, Will, I noticed you're being festive today. Uh, well, you know, it is it is the the high holy day uh, for our culture as, as he walks away <laughs> to go tend to his roommate who thinks he's No, I actually from the went to go turn the air conditioning on because it is it's hot. Yeah, I, I have the fan on. It's getting hotter and I don't like it, especially uh, when I'm like wearing my Mark Echo Boba Fett hoodie. Supposed to be, it was, I thought it was supposed to be a second ice age. What's going on? Hurry yeah, up with that. Seriously. <laughs> Cl climate change is failing us. <laughs> so, it's the what do we do on this holy day, Will? Uh, How do we celebrate? I got, I, you know, that's a very good question. I watched the Hasbro Pulse um, live stream of all the new figures they're going to release. Not impressed. I didn't know <laughs> didn't that. Didn't like it at all. They they do it every you know every few months, not a, not a good batch, which is ironic because today is the debut of the bad batch. Wait, it sure is. Okay, wait, you're not going to believe this. We've talked about it on the show before. How my daughter will grab the Apple TV remote and just start buying things. Yes, she hit the right combination of buttons to start the bad batch by herself. I thought you were going to say she she uh, downloaded <laughs> Star Wars: Galaxy of Heroes. <laughs> <laughs> Which you can get uh, your you can get the yes. fourth character of, of from the Bad Batch in Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes today right now. Yeah, go go ahead everybody. The hashtag go, go do that. Hashtags sponsored by EA. Yeah, or we were at one point. <laughs> um, I didn't do anything for Star Wars Day. I slept all day. Besides, I literally post that I, ad. I I put this shirt on and I watched that live stream. Uh, and then I remembered we had a show to do, so I figured get festive. I got my Poe Dameron helmet, which you saw, my hoodie that I'm going to take off because it's hot in this room. Uh, the, the, I, of course, have I, mean, I, I have mean, my Star Wars mug that I always drink. You put a lot of effort into this, but the commitment isn't there because you're not wearing the helmet. I thought about <laughs> it. Like, how am I going to wear the helmet and the headphones at the same time? You would have to do it all for the whole show. Yeah. Anyway. I'm glad we're all here and having a great Star Wars yes. Day. Happy May 4th, everybody. Happy, uh, happy May 4th. Leo the Joker, thank you for the Prime subscription. And the Z 4 m 4 thank you for the five months. May the 4th be with you, my favorite bros. Aw, oh, thank you. Uh, all right. So, uh, <laughs> the biggest news that <laughs> happened this past week is the stupid Epic versus Apple uh lawsuit it actually uh, broke a lot of news about the gaming industry as a whole yeah so like we knew this was gonna be like a big news story going into it because it's one of the biggest companies in the gaming industry going up against one of the biggest companies period maybe the biggest company um but what happened was the past two days have just been you know one leak after the other about like all this other crap that happens within the gaming industry as a whole that like we didn't really know about or like if we had our suspicions of and it, like kind of got confirmed uh through these uh leaks and depositions and whatnot so yeah. we have a list of a bunch of them that i think are the most interesting there, there's there's yeah. some there's some juicy inside info that makes a lot of companies look very bad <laughs> yes <laughs> um but it's the top of the month it is so, the top so of we the can't, month we can't talk about it just yet we have to no it's very important talk about the playstation plus and xbox uh live games with gold for the month of that's May. right friends uh if you are subscribed to either playstation plus or xbox live uh gold uh they give you free games uh as long as you stay subscribed to them and we're going to tell you what those games are just as soon as the playstation blog website loads on my damn computer you also gotta put game pass 
when we do this because there is uh there is a game pass for me yeah i don't know if my computer does anything i'll don't worry, fast. Will. It, ha it worked for me. We got, for PlayStation 5, we got Wreckfest. Drive hard, die last. <laughs> Sounds sick, dude. PlayStation 4, we got Battlefield 5. That's the World War 1 one. That's the World War 2 one. That's the World War... Because Battlefield 1 was the World War right. 1. Right, yes. One. I knew that. Battlefield 5 was World War 2. Mm-hmm. I didn't even, I didn't know that. Yeah. Standard Deep is also for PlayStation 4. It's a dude with a with a pipe hitting a, a tentacle. Yeah. That's the game. Let me see what Standard Deep is. Is this agoraphobia? What is what is it when you're afraid of the water? Aquaphobia? No, like like deep sea stuff. Oh, I have no idea. I don't know. But this is this that's what this game looks like. Yeah. Or it looks like looks like a uh, like it looks like you're just stranded on a desert island. You're you're Tom Hanks. Uh, Thal <laughs> Thalassophobia. Okay, that's what this is. Did it work for you? You having problems? No, what's the, happening? The PlayStation blog isn't loading. Oh, well, well, there you go. Well, that's all mm. we, we we did it already. Anyway, <laughs> so these games are available starting today, uh, and will be available throughout the rest of May up until. The first Tuesday in June. I, I'm pretty sure. Did did they announce the next Battlefield already? Because they teased it. They they teased it. They didn't announce what it was. They didn't announce what random number it's going to be. They didn't announce um, when it's going to take place. Mm. Yeah. So uh, they're giving us this because it will be very soon out of date. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there's there's that. Over on Xbox, which uh, just, just poor poor games with gold. <laughs> so on the Xbox One, from May first to the thirtieth, you get Armello. Cool. Never heard of. Uh, from May sixteenth to June fifteenth, you get Dungeons Three. Never heard of. Mm -hmm. uh, on the Xbox 360, which you can play on your Xbox One and Series X through backwards compatibility, uh, from May 1st to the 15th, you get the first Lego Batman. And okay. from May 16th to the 31st, you get Tropico 4. Uh, Armello. Uh, I got to confuse with the game called Chariot because it has the exact same logo. Oh, does it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, it's not the exact same, but it's very similar. Look, look at these, look at these two logos. Look at that. Oh yeah, you can't unclick it. It looks very <laughs> similar. Uh, yeah, but it's not. Uh, it looks like an RTS type deal. Not, not about it. Yeah. Uh, I, I have firsthand experience with Lego Batman. Um, it's good. It's a it's your standard Lego game. Um, fun fact, it is the first Lego game to have a wholly original story. Oh. It's not based on any particular, uh, I mean, it's based on Batman, obviously, but it's not based on any particular pre-existing Batman story. Uh, Tropico 4 is a pretty big deal. People love the Tropico series. Yeah, Tropico is like a cult classic series. People, people are into Tropico. Oh, but we're on to five already. No. We're on to six. Jeez. So you got well, two two ago is the tropical that you got. Well, to be fair, this is a 360 game, so that's dumb. Yeah. Uh, this is a poor showing from, from all around. Uh, yeah, but we have Game Pass. If you have Game Pass, I did throw the Game Pass. Yeah, it's uh, right underneath the link for. I, I, I have it right. Games of Gold. Yeah. Um, just Cause Four Reloaded. Uh, are we on five or no? Four is the last one, right? Four is the last one. Yeah. Outlast, two, two, okay. Psychonauts, uh, Psychonauts, Red Dead Online. Just, so just the online, just the online. Oh, is Which that, I surprised? I thought that was free. Is it the new online? The new Red Dead. It's whatever came with Red Dead Two. Yeah. Okay. And then that spun off into its own thing. Okay. Right. Uh, that's what I'm asking you. I have no idea. I think. I think. I think that's right. Uh, steep. 
it's ubisoft's like uh yes. like like snowboarding game or yeah uh, or or winter extreme sports game yeah uh this <laughs> that <laughs> I don't it's, know what that game is. Soccer? It's, uh, some soccer. It, it's, it is soccer. It, it is soccer. It's FIFA 21. Okay. But they e could have e put the words FIFA. EA yelling. <laughs> That's what game this is. Yeah. Dragon Quest Builders 2. A lot of people love that game. Yeah. So you can get it on Game Pass. Final Fantasy uh, 10 and 10 2. Remnant. From the Ashes. Cool. Yeah. All right, so better showing. I mean, yeah, I mean, Game Pass is Game Pass has been crushing it, while uh, the free offerings from the online services has been not crushing it. Because I guess that's what the the well, whole thing with Game Pass is the games that you get with it. So like they're putting like a lot of effort into it. This is just I feel like this is just an off month for PlayStation Plus because they've had some good months like within the last within the year of twenty twenty one. Microsoft just clearly is moving up, moving all their focus to Game Pass. Right. And if, at this point, it feels like they're giving away games with gold out of obligation. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, a few weeks ago, they wanted it, and it seemed like they wanted to end it all, and then they they yeah. they got forced to keep going. Um, <laughs> even in terms of Game Pass, this isn't like amazing. This is this is just it's okay. Like people are gonna like Dragon yeah. Quest Builders too. Steep, I've always wanted to try. Um, yeah, I, still, I don't know if I will. Um, and Just Cause Four is a fun little game to to mess around in. So, yeah, uh, I should note that leaving Game Pass this month because games do leave Game Pass. Oh, leaving no. Game Pass this month, it would will be Alan Wake, Battlefleet Gothic Armada Two. Uh, Dungeon of the Endless, Final Fantasy IX, Hotline Miami, and Plebi Quest: The Crusade. Okay, make sure you play F Plebi Quest: The Crusades, everybody, <laughs> before you run out of time. Yeah. All right. So that's all the free games you can get this month on your consoles. Yeah. Buckaroos. Mm-hmm. Um. We got what do we got here? We got Smalls out with five months. I wish I had something witty to say, but keep up the great work, Wolf Bros. Well, thanks. Thank you for the Prime subscription. Thank you. And Razzle Jazzle with a hundred bits. May the fourth be with you, Wolf Bros. I finished the Bad Batch premiere about ten minutes before the podcast started. Looking forward to the rest of the series. Nice. Did you watch it at all? I did not. I I am I so behind on any like Star Wars animated anything. Yeah, exactly. And I, I feel like all the Star Wars animated stuff like ties into each other. So I I have to just start at the beginning of Clone Wars. I've seen the movie. I gotta start at the beginning of the show and just power through. Mm -hmm. I got I got I don't have enough time. I finally started watching Voltron on Netflix again. I forgot how much <laughs> I love that show. So um when I'm done with that, maybe. Did you watch Etch Did you watch SSS Gridman at all? I no. I'm interested in that. I am interested in that. Is it? I didn't. It's like on it. something. It was, it's I, on two different services. One is in English. One is one is in Japanese. I watched it on Funimation. Is that the like one in English? <clears throat> I think it was in English. Okay. Um, I didn't. I didn't like it. I got. It. I it was just yeah, because okay. I want to check that out. Uh, Kate, thank you for the hundo bits. I wore my Star Wars shirt today without even realizing it was May the Fourth. LOL, my subconscious knew. It was. It was your. your yeah. It was. Force. It, it was your Metaclorians. It was the Force. It yeah. was. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Metaclorians are canon. People accept it. <laughs> um. All right. Now we got to break down Apple versus uh, Epic. Yeah. Did you see that it's it's they've been streaming just the audio live on the Game Awards Twitch account? Have you seen that? Really? Yeah. No, I saw. Apparently, there's a Discord feed for it that's been streaming it. The, I didn't put it. In, I didn't case? put it in here. Why yeah, would it be on Discord. Oh, because oh, it's is it audio only? That would make sense. I, it might be. I did see that people like within. I didn't put it in the notes, but uh, when they were first trying to get the live stream set up, people were just spamming like crap in the chat. 
like free Fortnite, fuck you apple and things like that <laughs> I I saw, I saw an article that said that the, it started off with peop, with kids just yelling their like YouTube handles, like Fortnite yeah. kids. All right. Well, anyway. Uh, all right. How do we how do we tackle this? Well, <laughs> uh, should we just go down the list of what, what news have? that broke from from the case? Yeah. Yeah. And if we well, want to, uh, let's back up. Let's tell okay. everybody what this court case is even about. So. Okay. So, uh, uh, many moons ago, um, Epic decided to, uh, in, in some weird sort of like, uh, like rebellious act, they decided to, uh, circumvent, um, Apple's own, uh, baked in microtransaction system, uh, because Apple takes a cut of the microtransactions that you- Apple takes a 30% cut of- all app store purchases and that includes of uh, microtransactions within the app you already downloaded so anything you bought through the Fortnite app apple gets 30 percent, and it's been like that since the app store launched yeah so in in some weird rebellious move one day uh epic just decided uh they pushed out an update uh, on for, for Fortnite on the uh ios app store so that it completely circumvents that 30% cut, which is obviously a, 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 bra a breach of contract and, uh, and yeah. against the terms of service of the App Store. So Apple immediately removed Fortnite from the... Well, actually, not immediately. It was up for like a while. Um, yeah. And then uh, uh, Apple removed it from, from the App Store. They also did the same thing on the Google Play Store. Yes. Um. Which is weird because Google ha is a little bit more lenient with things like that. <laughs> right. So, uh, lawsuit ensued, <laughs> basically. Yeah. Basically, I like, Epic knew they were go Apple was going to do that, and as soon as Apple did that, they announced they were suing Apple. <laughs> yeah, they... With they, all they, the proper court documents filed and everything. Epic had this big, elaborate video about their big rebellious act uh, ready to go because they knew Apple was going to take the game down or whatever epic is doing this um obviously they don't like they, they're one of the, they're probably the biggest game on the app store uh they didn't like that the the amount that apple takes out of it and they're using this as a way they're like we're the biggest game that could we're the big we're the biggest company that can take this hit we can afford yeah. to lose this you know market share so we're gonna do it for all of the other small creators who who could benefit from having uh, a little more of a percentage of, of of the of the money um epic on their own app store on pc where do they take 10 percent? we learned or 12 11 or 12 percent. Yeah. they take like yeah they take a significantly less of, of a cut uh than than apple does uh so epic is like framing this like they're fighting for the little guy which i yeah it's partly true but yeah. uh at, at you know what a lot of these court documents that a lot of these things that come out make it make epic look great compared to everybody else <laughs> <laughs> so um uh i i still think it's like you know big company versus big company like big evil corporation versus big evil corporation but i yeah. do think that somebody had to uh if this is a problem that a lot of developers didn't didn't like if this is a problem that a lot of developers had against apple then somebody had to do something about it and yeah this was going to happen eventually epic just decided they were going to be the ones to pull the trigger yes uh which which uh competition's good i, I don't think yeah. anything bad could come of this for us consumers the only bad thing is that if you were a fortnite fan and you happen to play on ios you, can, you yeah. can't and you haven't been able to since this freaking thing started and you know what it's probably good that you don't play fortnite on your iphone get a goddamn console <laughs> um all right did we explain that correctly enough i think so uh edward says that it's still in the google store for some reason uh, oh, they got no qualms against Google. Yeah, <laughs> maybe maybe they decided to comply. Um. All right. Well, the first thing here is Epic sent eleven point six million dollars on free games. Yeah. They they spent. 
yeah, there's it's they spent a total because you know Epic gives away free games every month as mm-hmm. well, and you know those are not free. Somebody has to pay for them. Epic pays for them, and in total, they paid over eleven point six million dollars to get the rights to give these games away for free. And this article, The Verge has done like a really good job of like breaking down like every single thing that's been happening in this court case. I didn't right. put every single thing, obviously. Um, but here they actually have a chart of how much they actually paid to get each game. Some game, it it varies from game to game, obviously. Like it was $1.5 million to give away the Arkham Trilogy. Damn. They had to pay, they paid Warner Brothers $1.5 million to give away the Arkham Trilogy. Uh, Super Meat Boy, when they gave that away for free, they only paid fifty thousand dollars <laughs> poor super meat boy i know i mean i get uh, it everybody's yeah. playing that game already i know but no, they, they they went, went, the, the epic store for super meat boy yeah celeste they have celeste on here i can't understand this chart at all uh it's weird because there's entitlements and then there's buyout price and i don't know Okay. Okay. So seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars for the buyout price. Buyout price is what they actually paid. Okay. Yeah. Is entitlements the downloads? No. Uh, maybe. We're focused mostly on the buyout price. Right. 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 Yeah. yeah. Subnautica made one point four million. Super That's... Meat Boy's right under that with fifty thousand. <laughs> World of Goo only made fifty thousand. Fort Rhyme made forty five thousand. Oh, Rhyme, you gotta negotiate better, dude. Check this out at the bottom. Mm-hmm. Metro twenty thirty three Redux zero. The hell happened there? They didn't. I I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I guess they didn't. They didn't pay for. Uh, Deep Silver's just like, just fucking take Metro. <laughs> Not even I, the good one. <laughs> Epic, I mean, through these court documents, we see that Epic is, they they package deals together. So this might yeah. have been part of a bigger deal with with uh, with Epic Games. Probably. Um, I'm trying to see if, okay, it was published by THQ. I'm trying to see if maybe it like used, oh, Unreal Engine. No, 4A for, yeah. for Engine. It's its own for engine. A with- Four, yeah, 4A is the original developer. Yeah, it's their own engine for that game. So, yeah, yeah it doesn't make any sense. Hmm. So, it's also good to note uh, Epic Games, they make the Unreal Engine, which a, a yes. lot of games run on. So I Epic know that this... the Arkham series runs on Unreal 3. Epic is a big, like, you know, corporation. They're, they're, they're like a huge deal in the gaming industry. Um, yeah. So a lot of games run on that Unreal Engine. If you're an indie developer or you at home, you could just download Unreal and start tooling around with it and start making games. And and yeah. you don't have to pay them a dime until you get to a certain point. If you start making a certain amount of money off your game, Epic wants a cash in. Um, yeah. So there could be some deals like that going on here. Like maybe Epic was like, you don't have to renew your Epic. You don't have to renew your Unreal license. Instead, just give us uh metro redux or whatever yeah maybe that was like a thq thing i don't know anyway what's this what's this chart on the right uh hold on oh it's my place are you you watching the bad batch on your other monitor or something (laughs) no 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 i i forgot another article and i put it in uh what was it move average of UA cost and cumulative new accounts? I don't know what UA cost means. I think I think it's just the show. I thought maybe this was like gonna show like this is how much we spent on on free games and this is how much new users we got because of it. Yeah. Uh, new accounts with UA costs. Yeah, I guess that's what that means. User, that seems about right. Uh, they're saying user acquisition is what UA usually that that makes stands for. That makes sense. Yeah. Um. So I mean, it looks like it paid off. It looks like they're. Yeah, eleven million dollars in 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 games. Looks like it, it it paid off for them. They got a lot of new accounts. 
Well, uh, f- what? Oh, go ahead. No, no, no. No, finish what you were going to say. I was just, I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> it wasn't well, important. What I was going to say was that actually ties into the next bullet point that we have. Okay. That a- Epic actually spent $1 billion, billion with a B, $1 billion on PC exclusives by 2019. So oh, so not free games, games that not free games. These are games that launch exclusively on the Epic Store, not Steam or anywhere else. So this is now. I remember what I was going to say. Like getting accounts is worth a lot for these companies, these big corporations, and I don't quite understand why it's worth a billion with a B dollars, (laughs) but clearly it is. Because Epic's been doing great. Yeah. I guess, I guess because it's easier Um, to serve people more stuff if you have their, if you have them on your platform. Yeah. Anyway, continue. Uh, it's, it's not in this article, but they spent something like 115 million on Borderlands three alone. And (laughs) yeah, they made that money back within the first month of its release. Wow. And then some. So like it was, it was very profitable and a very good deal for them. I I knew Borderlands was a big game. I didn't know it was that big. Yeah. All right. So what's this article, Will? Uh, f- uh yeah. Basically, just Epic spent a billion dollars on PC exclusives. <laughs> I mean, is that really all you, any more you need to know about? Well, that? why is this even relevant to the court case? Why is any of this relevant to the court case? <laughs> to be honest, I think it's not so much that it's relevant to the. There's a lot of shit in this court case. I didn't put this in, but Tim Sweeney got on the stand and had to identify a PlayStation Five. <laughs> could he do it? He That's could do question. it. <laughs> like a lot of this, just I don't understand why any of this is relevant to the court case of trying to show that Apple has a monopoly of selling products selling apps on their own device Mm -hmm. i think this is interesting because it gives you an idea of just what epic is doing in order to put their foot in the door of the pc game market space you know right like what are they willing to do they are willing to spend a billion dollars to get exclusive games uh exploring the documents tantalizingly marked highly confidential attorney's eyes only (laughs) there (laughs) emerges two imagined pathways into the epic games into the epic game store's future one an aggressive uh pursuit scenario the other a winding down scenario possibly suggesting the megacorp considered that the whole experiment might fail i mean yeah you need to have an exit strategy it makes sense yeah um oh Assumptions, scenarios, assumptions, number of exclusive deals, uh, aggressive pursuit model, and then winding down model. Okay, so that's if they if they decide that they needed to pull the parachute, they yeah. could they could get out of it somehow. Okay, so yeah, basically that whole article is just they spent one billion dollar on exclusive game, yeah. uh, and for a while, every time there was an exclusive game, um, people would go, ah, oh, epic, ah, yeah. Um, Sony vehemently against crossplay. Oh, this is the this is the like I think the biggest news that came of that, or or at least the yeah, one that th- that really got is, me. Yeah. Uh, not only were they against it, but uh, they they take a they take a cut of any so, like crossplay. <laughs> I want to give some backstory to this because I feel yeah. like this r- very quickly got glossed over and got lost for people cross play mm. on on online games between consoles was not a thing ever until 2019 until yes. this until until fortnite got playstation and 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 xbox and nintendo to to go on board it yeah. wasn't until fortnite i mean there were some games that had cross there were some play, games that had but cross it was play very like- rare you can do console to computer. That was always a thing. Mm-hmm. But you started to see uh, not just console to computer, but like games like Rocket League, Fortnite, Minecraft, 
were allowing Switch players to play against Xbox players. Right. But which even was console to PC was, was very rare. Yeah. It was becoming that was becoming more common, but the fact that you could play from, between Switch and Xbox players was unheard of, right? And actually, quite revolutionary. And, and everybody Sony, was talking about wanting to do it. All these companies were talking yeah. about wanting to do it, but the only the, the, the big the hurdle was PlayStation was was yes. Every it was all rumored that PlayStation was stonewalling it. Um, yeah, and basically, cross platform play wasn't a thing until it happened in Fortnite. Fort, yeah. I guess Fortnite was so big at the time that they strong armed PlayStation into playing ball, and that basically news, that news didn't drop until Fortnite dropped on the Nintendo Switch at E3 in 2019. Yes. So that was the biggest news to come out of friggin' E3 that year, and yeah. um, it was it was it 2019 or 2018? You were there. I think, I think it was 20. It was the the one. I think it was the one we went with Piscini. <laughs> that was 2018. Oh, it was 2018. Yeah, because 2019 uh, was the last one that I went to. And you weren't yes. there, right? No, I was there for that. You were there for that. That one we didn't no, go. I think, it, I think it was 2018. We could just easily look up when Fortnite came out on the Switch. Fortnite came out on the Switch. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it, up no, until then... It, cross says, it says it in the article, 2018. <laughs> okay. Yeah, up until then, cross-platform play just wasn't a thing. And then after that, cross-platform play immediately became an expectation for games. It yeah. Everybody just immediately expected, I should be able to play this game. If I'm playing on an Xbox, I should be able to play against people on PlayStation. Yeah. And, uh, because there, were, there was no real technical reason why they couldn't. It was just the platform, or the platform holder said yes or no. And correct. we saw Microsoft saying yes, and shockingly nintendo saying yes a lot more than sony was right and i think a lot of people because when they get, they play fortnite on uh playstation they wanted to start playing on switch they couldn't transfer their stuff over right that was it that was it that was the big one that was what a lot of that's when a lot of people realized that you couldn't do that on playstation P playstation uh allowed it to happen but they still had a lot of problems that you can tell they weren't they were like very reluctant yeah. to, to actually uh make it happen there was a lot of debate whether yeah. or not it was nintendo or microsoft or sony that was keeping cross-platform play from happening but that yeah. the the way that playstation kind of ruined the cross-platform play in fortnite um it was pretty clear that they were the ones who were reluctant to even yeah. to have it happen but anyway now we have definitive proof that yeah. <laughs> sony's a bunch of pieces of shit and they're the reasons why cross-platform play didn't happen for all these years in the months leading up to Sony's decision to block Fortnite crossplay in 2018, Epic Games had pleaded with Sony to enable crossplay. Uh, emails in the Epic Games versus Apple case reveal. Uh, I do, I can't think of a scenario where Epic doesn't get what we want. That <laughs> possibility went out the door when Fortnite became the biggest game on PlayStation, said uh, Joe Kreiner, Epic's uh, vice president of business development. Uh, Kreiner proposed. We announced crossplay in conjunction with Kreiner proposed. We announced crossplay in conjunction with Sony. Epic goes out of its way to make Sony look like heroes. Epic <laughs> even offered to brand its E3 presence with PlayStation or add unique characters exclusive to PS Plus subscribers to sweeten the deal. Let's make this hu a huge win for us all. Epic's not charging. Epic's not changing its mind on the issue, so let's just agree on it now," said Kreiner. So, so, uh, Sony didn't agree. So, so, so Epic was really desperate to get Sony on board because they yes. were they were the only ones who weren't doing it. And yeah, and, and and from the sounds of the, of this email, Epic was was like like listen, we're big deals right now, and we're not we're not changing our mind. We want this, and we're gonna yeah. get it. Whether you give it to like, <laughs> we're gonna take it from you. Just give us the cross-platform play. I don't know how uh, they pulled it off because it, it from the from the email that Geo Corsi I, sends back, it doesn't yeah. sound like they want it to happen at all. Geo Corsi, senior Sony senior director of development relations at the time, dismissed the idea, noting that cross-platform play is not a slam dunk, no matter the size of the title. A clear reference to Epic's flex about Fortnite's dominance on PlayStation. As you know. Many companies are exploring this idea, and not a single one can explain how cross-console play improves the PlayStation business. And, and, and you know what? 
I can I see mean, it from the PlayStation perspective because PlayStation 4 was the biggest console of, of the generation. Yes. So why would you want cross-platform play when you're the ones on top? I think it was in the exactly, X. I yeah. remember, I don't have any proof of this, but I remember in the Xbox 360 days, Xbox 360 in America at least was the big console and Microsoft yes. didn't want cross-platform play because they're like, what, what benefit do we have? We're already on top. Um, so I can understand from PlayStation's perspective, why would they want cross-platform yeah. play? It just, people are like, for example, I, I would, when I would only, you know, back, back in the day when I used to only get one console, cause I didn't have to make videos on them. I, right. I would get the console that all my friends got cause I wanted to be able to play with them. So mm -hmm. if you're the big console, of course, it's going to benefit you to keep people in your ecosystem. Um, yeah. but uh, they found a, they, they, uh, I, I still don't understand how this series of emails turned into a uh, cross platform play being allowed. Well, there's two things you got to remember. The first and the most obvious Sony was publicly embarrassed into allowing cross platform <laughs> play to happen. I don't remember that. Well, think about it. Nintendo, again, Nintendo and Microsoft. <laughs> were allowing cross-platform play. They made a Minecraft commercial when Minecraft launched on the Switch, making a big deal about how you can play against Xbox and Nintendo and Switch uh, players. That's true. And, and like, there that. was a lot of bad PR and press about the whole thing. So eventually, Sony just relented and said, fine, we'll allow it to happen. But there's more to it than that, according to this court document. Uh, Sony apparently found a way to siphon money from its competitors in exchange for access to PlayStation players. The email correspondence does not reveal where the issue ultimately ended up, but a document entitled Cross-Platform Policy Requirements and Process from August 2019 after Sony's change reveals how Sony may now approach cross-play. A cross-platform a cross revenue share forcing publishers to pay Sony a royalty whenever PlayStation <laughs> players contribute more than a certain percentage to the bottom line uh. of a cross-platform game to offset the reduction in revenue from Sony-enabled crossplay. So, so I completely forgot that like uh so so that was that was Epic's plan here was was Sony doesn't want to play along. They very clearly don't want to play along. Geo Corsi is like, you've got to prove to us that this is beneficial to PlayStation or else we don't want anything to do with it. And Epic's like, yeah. fine, we'll prove it. And then they publicly shame PlayStation for not playing along. That was their, the, the ace up their sleeve. Yeah. And, and it worked. And, and, and it but, worked. But here's PlayStation reluctantly being like, fine, we still want a shit ton of money from you. Yeah, so good, give us money whenever somebody plays on a different console. So, so it looks like the, the rev share, the way it works is uh, there needs to be a certain amount of PlayStation users playing with each other. That's what it looks like to me. If the proportion of PSN revenue share divided by the PS4 gameplay share for a title is less than 0.85 in any given month, the partner will play Sony Interactive Entertainment a royalty to offset the reduction in revenue. Okay, okay. so it's, does this game, meaning Fortnite, does Fortnite yeah. contribute to PlayStation Network signups? Yeah. And it needs to reach a certain, a certain percentage of signups. And if it doesn't, then this cross-platform gay uh, gay then this cross-platform <laughs> game owes sony money that's uh, uh okay i can see that from playstation's perspective i can see that being uh a huge a huge thing that they got geo corsi has to bring this to the to the japanese suits over there and he's got to yeah. be like hey they want cross-platform play, and they're over there like, how does this make us any money? This is going to make us any money. Get yeah. the hell out of here. And then he has to... Then they get publicly shamed, and then he <laughs> has to... They have to propose this. Fine, this is how we can still make money even doing cross-platform. And honestly, they're the big deal. Sony's the big deal. They need Sony, so... Yeah. This is... Th this is their terms, so... It's yeah. still stupid uh, and and and, and uh, anti-consumer, but I mean, yeah. it's it's what they had to do in order to get the deal but done. It's not so much anti-consumer; it's anti-competition. 
Because, like, on our ends, we don't notice. Mm -hmm. Like, we didn't notice that we didn't know this is what was happening until this court document. To us, we were, you know, it's just like we were able to just play against, you know, our friends on other systems. Uh, According to Tim Sweeney, friend of the show, because he liked one of my tweets, Mm -hmm. uh, Sony is the only platform holder to require compensation of any kind for crossplay. That, that that's part of the competition though is that sony knows that they are needed in order to make this cross-platform thing happen yeah so uh so they're like give us money you need us let's make a deal yeah you know? this is this is the business this is the dirty grimy business stuff that we never should have seen as consumers uh but again it makes epic look great i don't and also this has nothing to do with epic versus apple i don't know why no. this is part of this at all i don't know either i guess i guess all of these emails got put up as as uh as you evidence and journalists just poured through all the emails and just ripped yeah. some some interesting stuff from it um, but yeah, I think this is from what I've seen, I haven't seen much, but from what I've seen, this is the biggest deal. I think, I think to me is showing how dirty PlayStation was about cross-platform play. Yeah. Uh, which is interesting because according to the next article of uh, Epic reveals, and this might be their most dam- damning thing. Epic reveals in, the, in a court document that PlayStation, not iOS is Fortnite's biggest cash cow. Oh, interesting. Earlier this month, we learned that the iOS version of Fortnite was a huge revenue driver for Epic Games. The game earned more than $700 million from iOS customers over the course of two years before it was pulled by Apple, according to court documents, released ahead of Epic's trial against the, the iPhone maker. But even though iOS Fortnite players brought in a staggering amount of money for Epic, iOS wasn't even the biggest platform in terms of revenue share for the game. Apparently, it might have even been among the smallest. Court documents reveal that PlayStation 4 generated 46.8% of Fortnite's total revenue from March 2018 to July 2020, while Xbox One, the second highest platform, generated 27.5%. iOS ranked fifth with just 7% of total revenue. The remaining 18.7% would have been split between Android, Switch, and PC. I, I have a question. I have a question. Yes. yes. You you could play Fortnite for free. You don't have to get a PlayStation Plus account, right? Yes. Correct. So I was going to say, it seems like this contributed to a lot of PlayStation Plus signups. but Oh, no. PlayStation Network. That's different than PlayStation Plus. PlayStation Network is just the overall... You know, PlayStation internet infrastructure. Right, but the crossplay agreement says PlayStation Network. Uh, yeah. Wait, wait. Well, remember, PlayStation oh. Network. PlayStation Network revenue. Yeah. So it's it's whatever they make. Off. Okay, so this includes microtransactions and stuff. I I would say, Epic's. Epic probably never had to pay anything for the cross-platform revenue share because they probably met a certain amount of of uh, yeah. Um, they probably met enough people were buying stuff off of the PlayStation Network so that they didn't have to pay any penalties for this cross-platform re- revenue share. I, I'm sure right. they were probably fine. This seemed more like a safety net to them, but this this whole cross-platform revenue share is horrible for smaller companies. Yeah, it's so, probably so, totally like, fine for Epic, but terrible for anyone else who ever wants to do cross-platform stuff. Like Rocket League, this might be a problem with. Right, right. Rocket League's a big game, but you know, Psionics is not as big as Epic is. Right, and 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 I don't. I think more people are playing that on a PC, probably. Yeah, it's it's not like Fortnite where f- almost fifty percent are playing it on PlayStation. That's yeah. crazy. And that also explains why Epic was so gung ho about getting a, a PlayStation on board because that was their biggest cash cow. Where are we? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, that's the big takeaway from this article. Uh, iOS's low revenues compared to the other platforms may not be entirely surprising based on past comments from 
Tim Sweeney, he said in a declaration that Fortnite on iOS represents 10% of the game's total average daily players in the two years from when the game launched to when it was pulled. Uh, And Fortnite is considered to be a billion-dollar business all on its own. In 2019, reportedly brought in $1.8 billion in revenue all by itself. (laughs) So, So you know what this tells me? This tells me Epic didn't like Apple's business model. It wasn't even yeah. making that much money off of Apple's business model. And it was probably making Apple a decent chunk of money. And they were like, fuck them. Yeah. And now this is happening. So they, Epic decided, fr- from my perspective, not knowing much about this, it seemed like Epic was shooting themselves in the foot to try to help the industry as a whole or, or because there was some yeah. weird spite that they had against apple but it seems more like they just didn't see a benefit in even being on ios at all and having apple take a a cut of like a big cut of their money so they were like fuck them we'll just we'll just pull it from the we don't like the way they're doing things we're going to show them why it's bad and then we'll sue the piss out of them that's what (laughs) that's what it seemed like to me basically yeah so um but it is it, it, it also th- this seems like a lot of work for for uh for for uh, f- f- for what seems like not much return <laughs> off of their end it, it, yeah it, it it the motivation is interesting i think tim sweeney is just really about this whole thing he he thinks this yeah he thinks that this is like going to set a precedent for uh for you know future app stores i guess All right, what else? All right. Uh, Fortnite has plans for Samus Aran, The Rock, and other skins, according to internal uh, documents. Cool. So the in the midst of all of this, <laughs> yeah, uh, there, there were plans to release, and it's not in this article, but in the court documents, there's concept art for the skins that they're, they're planning for Fortnite, including Samus Aran, Naruto, uh, Katniss Everdeen, The Bride from Kill Bill, Snake Plissken, John McClane, and not mentioned in this article, but also LeBron James. <laughs> what the hell? So, so th- th- this article says, looked into these Fortnite skins. Naruto? Oh my god, yeah. I didn't even... Th- that, hit, that just hit me now. <laughs> <laughs> um I, this is like i said this is not nothing none of this means that those skins are coming right it just means that this is what they were working on or, or it means I that they the have looked from, into it it doesn't even mean that they like yeah made the model or anything right well i mean they probably made the model just to show you know, as proof of concept but that doesn't mean it's going to get implemented into the game anytime soon. Right. I think the big su- uh, surprise is that Samus was one of them. Because we've seen Kratos for PlayStation and Master Chief for Xbox. It only makes sense that Nintendo gets one and they were looking into it. They were looking into putting Samus in the game, which makes the most sense. Yeah, I mean, having a Nintendo representation is, is I, I think, a big thing that's missing in Fortnite. And uh, Samus yeah. makes the most sense out of all of them. But um uh it's possible that they're waiting for metroid to be released it's possible they had this yeah. done a while ago because metroid was supposed to have been released yeah and uh true. and uh they're just holding off on it until metroid prime 4 is finally a thing um or um, it, nintendo shut it down because it, it's it, it's a weird th- i can't imagine nintendo being like yeah you could put our character in your game on other platforms that's not a very well, nintendo that- thing Edward Bova in the chat said Nintendo does not allow cross-platform play with their characters, such as in games like Rocket League. You can't use the Mario, Luigi, or Samus cars and cross-platform play, and you can only do cross-platform play on Switch with tablet and cell phones. I think you can cross-platform play on Switch with console. Um, but yeah, you can't you can't use the Mario car and play against somebody on Xbox. I'm not saying that Fortnite was going to be the exception, although they they might be. Right. Um, but it's just something that they were looking into. The the possibility of putting Samus in Fortnite, even if it's just against other Switch players, is is a high one. True. 
What this has to do with suing <laughs> Apple over revenue share, I don't know. <laughs> it does. It just it, it it just seems like uh, there is. It just seems like a lot of like emails and stuff got leaked because of this court case, yeah. um, and somehow journalists got their hands on it. Yeah, but this is this is good news for uh, for Fortnite fans on Switch, or if yeah. you if you're a if you're a diehard fan, <laughs> I don't know, a Naruto fan, Naruto. Yeah. Also, not sure what this has to do with Epic suing Apple. Uh, Walmart is apparently working on a cloud gaming service. And this was this was in the court documents. This was in the court documents. Walmart's unannounced cloud gaming service, codenamed Project Storm, has been detailed in new confidential emails. An exhibit in the Epic Games vs. Apple trial reveals Walmart's efforts to pitch its cloud gaming service to Epic Games and get Fortnite on board. Um, oh, I played Walmart's demo on an Android phone with an Xbox controller, and the experience felt like playing on PlayStation 4 and superior to playing on iOS or Android. Epic Games co-founder Mark Rain um, said in an email thread from April 2019, uh, Rain also excitedly shares a photo of a game clip with the rest of the Epic Games executive team showing how Walmart was planning to sell this in stores to let a phone attach to a controller. They're they're going to sell a clip for a crazy low amount. They were going to say something like two bucks. <laughs> and then yeah, there's there's a little slideshow uh slide on how they're gonna build it. how did this how did this happen? In an exhibit this... in the Epic Games versus Apple trial. Why? Yeah. Why is this brought up? Maybe I don't know. <laughs> maybe it's to show like their rev share is better. I don't know. Maybe. Uh yeah, there's there there I I mean honestly it makes sense for Walmart like uh yeah. No, it does make like Walmart's you know the biggest uh it's the, it's the biggest, you know, what do, what do you call it big box store retail the, chain re, it's yeah. the biggest retail chain in america and the only yeah. competition that they have is online storefronts and a lot mm -hmm. of people are buying their games now through online storefronts you could just download it right to your console yeah um this is walmart's way of being like no you can still buy it from us without leaving your house just yeah it'll go right to your phone or wherever and you can stream right from here so this is this actually makes a lot of sense for walmart to be working on something like this yeah and selling it I mean, selling a little clip for two dollars makes yeah. a lot of sense for walmart i mean they already own uh voodoo it's an online streaming platform so mm. it makes sense that they for movies that you know it makes sense that they would also try to do something similar with games mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh preliminary beta user experience concepts and there's fortnite right in the top left corner yeah Walmart is planning what it describes as an open ecosystem with the ability to stream from the cloud or download and play games locally. Oh, so you can do both. <clears throat> yeah. Because Walmart doesn't care. They just just want you to be in their ecosystem. Yep. The technology behind Walmart's cloud gaming service is Liquid Sky, a service Walmart acquired. Liquid Sky was previously powered by IBM's clouds, bare metal servers, and NVIDIA GPUs, and it appears to offer a powerful Windows PC for cloud gaming. Uh, Epic Games was one of the many publishers to which Walmart pitched. Reports originally surfaced about Walmart's plans in 2019, but the company has still not officially announced any cloud gaming service. Sources familiar with Walmart's plans tell The Verge that some publishers and developers had signed up to produce or host games on Walmart service, but that the launch had been put on hold once the pandemic began, be began last year. It's not clear if Walmart's cloud gaming service will still launch. We reached out to Walmart for comment on Project Storm, but the company did not respond in time for publication. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, I wonder what these companies feel, how, like how they feel about all of their internal memos yeah. being being leaked it, during this court case like like <laughs> walmart has nothing to do with apple versus yeah. epic and, and they, some they, of just, they just got hurt by it 
they just got affected by it. Some of this stuff, like the stony stuff, is pretty damning. Yeah, you know, I, it's not it's not a good look to sh to you know reveal that you're charging people, you're charging publishers and developers for cross platform play when mm -hmm. no one else is doing that. Right. Um. This this also. This one's a wild card. Yeah. Are we moving on, or do you have some? Yeah. Yeah. This one's. Yeah. This, no, we're moving on. This one's a wild one. This this uh, hold on <laughs> hold on to your bootstraps, boys. This, hold on to your butts. For, we're going for a ride here. <laughs> <laughs> Documents and details about the inner workings of the games industry are currently being revealed as part of the ongoing Epic Games vs. Apple trial, a highly confidential and heavily redacted Nintendo document has been doing the rounds as a result. Within that document is a section on antisocial forces by, by Stephen Satillo of Axios Gaming. The document notes that if a content provider is based in Japan, it cannot be an antisocial force or... You want you want to take that word, Bob? <laughs> Boryo Kudan. Boryo a Japanese Kudan. Boryo Kudan, a Japanese term which means violence groups or organized <laughs> crime groups. Effectively, the document imposes a black and white ban on partners working with the Yakuza. <laughs> so, so Nintendo has a document that states that if you are based in Japan, you cannot under any circumstances work with the Yakuza. <laughs> For any reason. And you know what? I understand why they would need yeah. to put that in writing. Yes, we understand. <laughs> yes, like to be fair, like most, if not all, companies, not just Japan, but all over the world, have some sort of like clause or stipulation saying that you know not to be involved in illegal activity. This is just very specific. No, it's because of the game Yakuza. <laughs> You think it's because of the game Yakuza? I'm almost certain it's because of the game Yakuza. Uh, didn't they have? Didn't they have? Didn't they like work with people from Yakuza from the Yakuza at some point to like uh, like as reference? Did they? I don't know. I don't. I don't know. Uh, anyway, if the developer or publisher wishes to work with the Nintendo, they are also not allowed to give monetary benefits to an antisocial force, use threats or <laughs> threat or violence in connection with transactions. All right, now this is over the top, or interfere yeah. with the business of Nintendo entities by spreading false rumors using fraud or force. The document reads. Now that has nothing to do with the game Yakuza. <laughs> That's yeah. that's basically don't be uh don't be a criminal. Don't don't try to yeah. strong arm us. Of According course this doesn't bar Nintendo from working with game studios that are making games about organized crime groups in Japan, such as Ryu Ga Go Toku's Yakuza series. However, in the past, Yakuza series producer Daisuke Sato has said that the Nintendo Switch is not the ideal platform to develop Yakuza games on. Was Yakuza uh, on Switch? No, I don't think so. I don't think there's been a Yakuza game on Switch. Uh, there were two Yakuza games on Wii U. Oh, okay. That's it. That's it. Uh, Technology in the chat has uh, has been saying like it's been Japanese law to include these clauses in business contracts for nearly twenty years. Oh, that may be the case. That doesn't make it any less hysterical <laughs> that they have to specifically spell out <laughs> that you can't work with the yakuza. So, so it says give. So they're not allowed to give monetary benefits to an antisocial force, use threat yeah. or violence in connection with transactions. So I guess PlayStation's out, or interfere <laughs> with the business of Nintendo entities by spreading false rumors using fraud or force. I guess Epic kind of did that with PlayStation. No, that was more like I don't know. It was public shaming. <laughs> right the same thing we are going to cancel you if you don't allow cross-platform play to happen it, it was like offhand embarrassment right uh 
you didn't you didn't watch uh the last dance did you uh no what is that it's the espn it's the espn documentary on michael jordan's last year right there's a there's a lot of there's a lot of that documentary where it's like somebody tries to get the better of jordan in a game and jordan when he talks about he's like oh you're gonna dunk on me okay fine show you how it is and then jordan goes on to score 100 points in the game by himself (laughs) That's basically what Epic's <laughs> been doing. Oh, oh, so you're not going to allow cross platform? Okay, fine. That's what we're going to do. It's, and then it, just embarrass them in front of everybody. Big corporations are basically just uh, just mob bosses. They're just yeah. They're all just petty, petty people. Yeah. Um. And and I mean, like Tim Sweeney, he's just a Friend guy. Show. <laughs> he's just a guy that got into i mean he's he he was a like an, what what was the first, what was what games did he work on like early on he's uh, just like a, he was just like one of the old 90s tech guys that just yeah. basically made a bunch of games and got an insane amount of money really quick and now he's just a guy who runs a big multi-billion dollar corporation <laughs> <laughs> i mean i, I mean, I'd, I'd imagine unreal tournament yeah, un- Unreal, Unreal Tournament, um, Cliff Blazinski's first game, Jazz Jackrabbit, uh, things like that. He has ties to Jazz Jackrabbit? Yeah. I, I didn't know that. Uh, oh, his family got an Apple II, and he began earnestly all- learning how to program on that. Wow. It all comes <laughs> full circle. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, Jazz Jack, Epic, Epic Pinball, um, ZZT, the Unreal series. He's he's from the he's from the era of just a bunch of nerds. Yeah, just like like it's software Apogee. Yeah, and getting a, the original Electronic Arts, and getting a lot of money really fast, and now all of a sudden yeah. they find themselves instead of coding, they find themselves running a big multi billion dollar corporation, and now yeah, uh, he's just a guy. Who has to <laughs> strong arm all of these companies into playing ball? Uh, anyway, we're, we're almost done here with, with yeah. all of the big hot news from this court case, which has only been happening for like two days, right? Yeah. Um, Microsoft explored reducing its Xbox Store cut to shake up console gaming. Well, they should have done that. Yeah, uh, confidential Microsoft documents reveal some big plans. Why? How did Microsoft documents get involved here? Microsoft had been planning to cut its Xbox Store cut to just twelve percent, which is, I think, what Epic Store is, according to confidential documents yeah. f- uh, filed in the Epic Games versus Apple case. The software maker details its store fees and changes in a document from January, where it also lists the 12% cut to PC games it announced this week. While most of the important parts of the document are redacted, one page reveals Microsoft also went wanted to reduce its 30% store cut on the Xbox side uh, console side. Um, uh, wait, did it actually reduce PC? It P- did for PC, yeah. They, oh. they announced this week that they reduced it for PC. The big news in this story was that they're all they were also talking about doing it with Xbox, the console as well. That's pretty. That's insane. I didn't know that they did that. Yeah. Uh, a table reveals all games will move to eighty-eight twelve, uh, a cut of eighty-eight twelve in mm-hmm. uh, uh, fiscal year twenty-one. What does that mean? C Y twenty-one. C Y calendar year calendar year 21 which means microsoft had been planning a significant cut to xbox transactions from some point in the 2021 calendar year while microsoft has announced its pc cut which is also listed in the same table the company has stayed quiet about any xbox plans a change to 12 percent would be significant particularly because microsoft sony and nintendo all currently take 30 percent on digital game sales um so I think this is still possible. They said calendar year 21. So yeah. it could happen at any point this year. Microsoft uh, has proven that they really, they <laughs> have a lot of money and they make a lot of money in avenues that are not gaming related at all. So yes. they can have a lot of fun with the gaming side. 
Um, So they're already pretty pro developer. I mean, they just bought yeah. like a thousand developers like last year. So um, reducing the development cut would bring a lot more games onto Xbox's storefronts and mm-hmm. uh, would be great for the developers. So absolutely they should do this. This is a, That would be a huge deal. Yeah. See, we like Microsoft here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, they don't got the exclusives yet, but uh, they, they no, they're killing but it. Everywhere they're working else. on it. Damn it, they're working on it. Um, yeah. So somebody in the uh, people in the chat were talking about because we we've been talking about how Apple takes a thirty percent cut of all microtransactions or whatever, uh, and and whatever purchases you make on the on the iOS app store. Uh, but yeah, the console manufacturers take that same thirty percent. Yes. So this lawsuit with Apple is also. Uh, potentially going to affect uh consoles as well it's basically i I think the mentality epic has is if they can get apple the biggest company in the world to change their rev share then they can get anybody to change their rev share because once apple does it you know everyone else is gonna fall in line right um and this shows that microsoft was going to do it on their own accord microsoft was like uh yeah Microsoft saw the problem with with this, uh, yeah. and, and, and also they already did it on PC. Yeah. So what's the difference if they do it on 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 the Xbox? They're really it's really just thirty percent rev share on Xbox because it's that's the way it is on other consoles. It's it it's yeah. not like they need it. They could probably get away with not having it at all. They're freaking Microsoft. No, they would need some sort of rev share because that's how. You know they make their money through, you know the the seventy thirty split. They make all. That's the whole point of this court case. Is like Apple makes a lot of money from, you know that thirty percent from developers. And it seems like it seems like Epic wasn't making that much because yeah they made a lot more on other console. Mm -hmm. Um, I hope they still do that. That would be great. That sounds like an E three announcement. Uh, last one, last bit of news here that I feel is worth talking about. <laughs> Epic pushed Xbox Chief to open free multiplayer just ahead of a Apple Fortnite battle. What? Epic Epic pushed Microsoft to open its Xbox network for free multiplayer gaming just weeks before the Apple and Fortnite battle. In the weeks leading up to Epic's decision to circumvent Apple's thirty percent cut on the Fortnite in-app purchases. CEO Tim Sweeney sent an email to Xbox chief Phil Spencer teasing something big and asking whether Microsoft uh, could time a free multiplayer with Fortnite season 14. Epic has certain plans for August that will provide an extraordinary opportunity to highlight the value proposition of consoles and PCs in contrast to mobile platforms and to onboard new console users, said Sweeney. While I can't share the details with any third party at this point, I give you Epic's assurance that our efforts will be positive and supportive to Microsoft, Xbox, and Windows. Sweeney also asked Spencer whether free Xbox Live multiplayer was coming and whether Microsoft could time it to support Fortnite Season 14, the season Epic Games launched uh, its alternative payment method that got Fortnite kicked off the App Store. Spencer replied that he (laughs) will get there and he wants He's Spencer replied that we will get there and I want to partner with you and that pushing these policies was at the highest levels at Microsoft, but implied that Xbox Live wasn't ready to go free multiplayer just yet. Totally understood, said Sweeney in response. (laughs) I gather there's a lot going on at Microsoft nowadays. Anyway, we'll enjoy the upcoming fireworks show. Y'all enjoy the upcoming fireworks show. He, he's he's like, he's fires. like, hold on to your butts, dude. We're gonna. He basically, he's basically like, hey, I'm sue. We're gonna sue Apple. <laughs> we're not gonna tell you we're suing Apple. That's what's happening. Before we do that, why, why don't you, why don't you do this? <laughs> and you know, I think if they knew that, if if Phil Spencer knew that was gonna happen, he might have made multiplayer free sooner. But. This explains why, like, whenever you hear, like, what's the day in the life of an average CEO? Like, you yeah. always hear, like, oh, they're just in meetings all day. 
and you're like that's boring why do they do it talking to people yeah. all day that doesn't make any sense now you understand Twim, tim sweeney's yeah. over here trying to work deals with uh, with every single company in the gaming industry yeah. to try to fuck over apple <laughs> i should i should clarify that uh this is in reference to you know because fortnite's a free game uh, but you still have to pay for xbox live in order to play it uh and recently microsoft rescinded that policy you can now play free to play games without xbox live gold yeah um, so this is what tim sweeney was referring to he wasn't referring to making multiplayer free across the board he's that, just referring to free to play games that was a big problem with xbox for a long time was yeah. that you you needed xbox live i mean xbox live was a great service but yeah you needed to pay a subscription fee in order to play uh even free to play games online and you didn't with playstation playstation yeah. you could just get a free playstation network account and play games uh play yeah. uh free to play multiplayer games online uh, same thing yeah. with nintendo uh so it took a while for microsoft to 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 play a ball there um yeah microsoft looked great in terms of uh cross-platform stuff but you did need to still buy their their uh subscription yeah. service which might have been why they were so eager to get on board because it would it benefits them because they were losing the console war and because yeah. it would give them a lot more they were looking for signups they were looking for for subscription uh signups and that's a, a great way for microsoft to get those subscriptions yeah. um nintendo is fine with just people buying their console because they make a, they make yeah. a little bit of money from the console sale um so yeah we're not saying microsoft is uh is is all goody two shoes here either yeah um but they're still looking better yeah uh one thing i want to point out it's not mentioned in this article but in phil spencer's email and in other articles have pointed this out but in phil spencer's email he says um i did want to let you know that i have your point on xcloud on other consoles haven't given up yes yes which uh, i'm surprised which that implies what you think it means that implies what you think it means is that microsoft is exploring ways of getting x cloud and game pass on non-xbox systems i'm surprised that wasn't part of that wasn't one of the articles uh yeah it, it was pretty much shown that microsoft is trying to get x cloud on, on other platforms uh yeah. na namely it's probably Nintendo. I'm sure yeah. PlayStation is not going to want to do this. Um, yeah. But Microsoft doesn't need PlayStation at all. They they already have their own big, expensive console. Um, yeah. What they need is, they have, is a mobile they have, platform. They have a Game Pass competitor. They have PlayStation Now, which isn't as good, right. but they still have one, and they have time to refine it and make it better. What Microsoft really needs is a good mobile uh a good mobile platform and they yeah. they i mean they have x cloud on on smartphones and there's all these little cool like doohickeys you can get to make a good gaming experience on a smartphone um but it's not going to be like a switch the switch is like yeah. going to be uh, a big game changer for for microsoft and also it's going to be great for nintendo too I, I think a lot of people who didn't care about nintendo previously are going to be stoked to see x cloud on on uh nintendo platforms especially when we start yeah. to see all these great games like halo infinite and stuff on xcloud mm -hmm. that means halo infinite will be playable on the nintendo switch if this is all you know, yeah and that'll be out. insane yeah that'll be crazy and that'll have online uh, multiplayer or whatever it's going to be a huge deal um actually you know what let's move this article up <laughs> <laughs> okay uh what did i do A Halo Infinite to support cross play and cross progression. Well, all right. This is between Xbox and PC. <laughs> oh. Okay. Well, I'd imagine Game Pass is part of that. Well, yeah. Microsoft has announced that uh, Halo Infinite will support multiplayer, cross play, and. Uh, cross progression across PC on the Microsoft Store and Steam, Xbox One, and Xbox Series X and S. Announced on Xbox Wire, the move is being pitched by Microsoft 
as a way to build communities around games and not devices. And we'll see customization and game pro game progress allow follow you across all platforms, as well as let you play with anyone on available devices. Um, as previously confirmed, multiplayer in Halo Infinite will be free to play. Microsoft also revealed that the game will come with some popular PC features, including ultra wide and super ultra wide Ooh. screen support, triple key binds, advanced graphics options, and more. Uh, it's another move from Microsoft that shows its interest in getting Xbox games onto multiple devices. Uh, with Phil Spencer recently going so far as to say that console tribalism is one of the worst things about the video game industry. 343 is clearly taking a cross-platform version of Halo Infinite seriously, with an engineer recently explaining how the game is being optimized for multiple platforms. After a major delay, Halo Infinite is looking much better in recent shots and will release in fall 2021. Okay, so I, I mean, having cross-play and cross-progression, I, 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 to me, that also means with xCloud, if you want to play this through through Game Pass yeah. or, well, or, or whatever, remember, cloud it's, streaming. It's going to debut in Game Pass because all first-party games debut in Game Pass. Right. So, but, but, but I mean, that, that what, doesn't necessarily mean it's going to have streaming. Exactly. Yeah. I feel, however... I feel like this might, because this is Halo. It's their biggest series. It's their biggest franchise. Why not try to get people on board with your cloud uh, gaming service that you really want to sell? Why not put your biggest game on that day one? It, it, they're pulling out all the stops for Halo Infinite, even though it's yeah. been delayed. Uh, they're yeah they're they're making it uh they're making the online free uh mm -hmm. they're they're enabling cross play and cross progression that they're, they're 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 giving it all of the features that they possibly can so i think of course they're gonna they're gonna put it on x club that that, that, that doesn't yeah. make any sense not to um and then you'll be able to pick up your game where you left off on, on your actual console if you decided to play it on on a console I think that's great. This is all good news. Yeah. Uh, how sick would it be to like be playing it on my Xbox and then I just decide, oh, wait, I got to go. Let me fire it up on my freaking uh, <laughs> on my on my switch. Yeah. There's a lot of rumors about whether or not this game will have a battle royale. I think people want it, but I'm pretty sure that they straight up said that they will, will never do that because <laughs> that, that's not a big it doesn't. That'd be weird for Halo to have a battle royale. Yeah. I mean, after Gears of War introduced like the horde mode, mm -hmm. uh, Halo Reach had a similar thing called firefight. Mm -hmm. So they they, you know, they're not above putting whatever the latest trend is in their game. They'll probably just have to put like a Halo spin on it. Right. Yeah, I don't, I, I I don't know how, how it'll work. Yeah. Um. Anyway, uh, we got notifications that were from a long time ago. We were deep yes. in epic lawsuit hell. So, yeah. <laughs> Alicia B-Side, thank you for the four months. Yeah, yeah, four months. Love you, Will, and you too, Bob. Thanks, dude. How you doing? And Luabic gifted a sub to Wolf Den Dead. <laughs> Who was going off about merch or something before. Uh, merch and how Epic should be spending money on us. Yeah. I, I agree on, with him. We need to render the show. <laughs> um, I want to take a moment to talk about two games that I played, two new games that I played recently, Will. Okay, do it. I played Pokemon Snap. Uh, All right. I played a decent amount of it. Um, I, uh, I, I think my concerns about it were were mostly true i had a i had a mm -hmm. lot of fun the first day that i played it i was like this is second right. a good time snapping all these pictures or whatever it is very repetitive so you have you have to replay levels multiple times um right and and it's on rails so you you're stuck doing the if you want to take a picture of one if you want to redo one picture you have to play the whole level again um uh. although there is a weird editing mode where you can like edit a photo and it make it allows you to basically retake the picture um, really? which was cool and i was like playing around with that 
so I, I was taking pictures. I have a lot of fun, and I was really happy with the results of some of them. And then I posted them online, and then I saw other people posting theirs, and they were the exact same pictures because <laughs> the game is on rails. And all of the same stuff happens in front of everybody that plays the game. So, yeah. uh, the game's stupid. I don't I think it's dumb, but I don't like it. Uh, that doesn't mean you don't have to like it. Maybe you'll like it. I just, I, I played a little bit of it and I was like, I don't need to play any more of this. I, uh, I feel like Pokemon Snap, I feel like you had the Pokemon Snap experience. <laughs> Because you once you get, once you beat the game, sorry, once you finish the game, once you like go back and you finally take the pictures that you actually want to take and get all the good ones, the replay value of that game just just diminishes substantially. Yes, <laughs> like there really is no reason for you to ever go back and play it once you finish it, whatever your definition of finish a game is. Yeah. So. Um... This wasn't an issue back in the day because uh, you couldn't post your pictures online. <laughs> you could yeah. print out the stickers, but not many people did that. Um, so you didn't really see that everybody else was taking the same pictures because it really does feel like you're taking these pictures and you're getting the composition and everything. You're editing them afterwards and making them look all nice and pretty. Yeah. Um, but for the most part, everybody else is doing the exact same thing. It's not like the photo mode in like the last of us where you're like able to yeah. do whatever you want and there's like a lot of all crazy settings and stuff which i think they should have done but they didn't the game is very pretty though i will yeah. say that uh, the, do you the, think this would have been better if it was more similar to like photo mode in like modern triple a game a thousand percent one thousand percent i want more yeah. options because there's no when you take a picture your only option is zoom in or or not Mm -hmm. and uh and that's it you can you can throw a, a friggin apple at their face if you want and that's the only way you can interact with the pokemon as far as i've gotten um the game is more fun than i was expecting it to be mm -hmm. but it's still not you know it's 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 i'm a i'm a grown-ass man <laughs> for a kid i'm sure they would have a great time how similar would you say it is to the original it's the exact same game. The exact same game. Okay. So, so, like the the animations are better than I was expecting. Um, the 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 graphics are a lot better than I was expecting. Um, there's like actual voice acting. It's it's still not like fully voice acted, but there's like actual right. voice acting. Um, there's a story with like characters and stuff. So like it's pretty cool in all of that regard. But uh, <laughs> the actual gameplay is just you're on rails and you're just literally just firing off pictures because right. you have to impress the 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 uh professor mirror you have to and you don't know what pictures are going to impress him there's like some like mm -hmm. parameters um but it's not like like a good photo in real life doesn't equal a good photo to professor mirror you know right he doesn't care about the rule of thirds or the fibonacci ratio or anything <laughs> like that he just he's a computer so um so you end up just taking a million pictures and hoping you get a couple like like a hoping you'll just randomly end up with like a lot of star ratings on one yeah. um so yeah i the, the game's the game's better than i was expecting but still not great also, I'm a grown ass man, and I'm not the target demographic for the game, and I fully understand right. that. Um, had fun printing the pictures, though. Pretty cool. Yeah, saw, saw your saw your video on that. Um, you, so I guess that means, you know, based on your video, it looks like you can use any type of printer, like photo printer, like the Canon ones I was mentioning last week. Somebody, those could work because you're just saving them to your phone no matter what what is that one called so somebody commented and said the i think Philo. it's called the, i think it's called the selfie oh i think it's called something else in europe um but that one looks cool it looks smaller and also i don't think that yeah. one has borders this has borders i think the canon one doesn't have a border around it yeah but yes as long as you get the photo on your phone you can use any portable printer that you want it just right. won't have uh It'll just be a different aspect ratio, possibly, and it it yeah. won't, you won't have fun borders that you could put on it. But the borders are stupid anyway. Um, 
somebody else said uh in the chat but you got all these all this film for that printer yeah i'm gonna use this printer for other stuff for like actual pictures <laughs> <laughs> it's a cool printer like it's also but it is expensive it's it's a lot for yeah. for what it is yeah um, so the the canon the canon version is the selfie spelt spelt in a cool hip way for gen zers oh phy yeah oh i didn't see this one there's also there's also the the ivy which is like their much smaller one that's the one they probably want yeah i mean self the selfies are more for like professional the, the ivy that, is more like the, the instamax competitor the one that somebody said was it in 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 spic they gotta change that name man <laughs> <laughs> This one, what is this one? Oh, that's what it is. Yeah, this, this, uh, oh, this is the series. And apparently they have actual cameras that have the printing capability. Yeah, so in, in America, those are, those are still Ivy. I think those are called Ivy Click. Ivy Click. Oh, there's a Q. Why do they got to do this to me? Do, do these cameras have yeah i think the camera has a printer in it. yeah yeah the camera has a printer built into now, it. now can you connect to the camera with your phone and print I a picture think, off your phone i think you can because that these these are only 60 dollars, and it's a freaking yeah. camera also that's pretty cool so if you can get an app to actually put it like put your own pictures in here then you can print your pokemon snap pictures from an actual camera that's pretty sick um polaroid keeps disappointing though i don't like the the one step they are die sub i think what are we talking about oh last witness how you doing polaroid made one too seth do you know if you can print uh, a picture from your phone onto this thing He's the Adorama guy. Ah. Um, what is your opinion on Game Explain video that Nintendo should make the Labo camera working with Pokemon Snap? Uh, yeah, I don't see why not. Yeah, no, this, they should absolutely let... I'm surprised they don't use Labo for more things. Because you can use the motorcycle controls on Labo for Mario Kart. I don't see. There's no real reason why they couldn't. Why you can't. So moving around in in Pokemon Snap kind of sucks. So like, it's not like a first person <laughs> shooter. You move around really slow. But if you move yeah. both sticks at the same time in one direction, you move a little faster. So that's weird. Uh, I don't see why not just let me have the camera Labo thing in VR and move my head around and, and take pictures right. that way. Maybe because it might make you sick because you're moving, but I, I don't know. Right. Did you try motion controls on Snap? They suck. No, I didn't try that at all. Fuji uses actual film. It's a film recorder and you can do so much option wise. Oh, that's true. This is actual film. Uh, the Canon one might be an actual printer. Yeah. Uh oh, dye sub is just heat activated color. Oh, it's one of those situations. All right, anyway. Uh oh, somebody said oh, so somebody lied in my comments. Somebody said that it's like <laughs> so Polaroid is the dye sub, right? It's like the heat thing. Because I think somebody said if you like hold it like this, it like makes it uh it makes the image warmer because you're heating it. Um, but this is film, so I don't think that happens here. All I know is you're not supposed to do this. Yeah, you're not supposed to shake it like <laughs> you're a Polaroid not supposed picture. To shake them. Anyway, uh, I played another game. Well, I played Returnal. So explain to me Returnal. Explain to me two things. I, uh, what is I this wish game? I could. <laughs> what is this game? And is it any good? Uh, because I still not still not a hundred percent sure what this game is. I've seen it. Like I know I've seen it, but I'm still not exactly sure what's going on. And in terms of response, I don't see any res positive response to this game. 
It's it, all either like it's fine, but or this game sucks. The gameplay loop is very good. The the, the actual okay. gameplay is great. Um, it's it's burdened by the fact that it is a permadeath um, uh, uh, procedurally generated. What do you call it? Uh, uh, why am I having a stroke? Roguelike. Roguelike. Uh, it's burdened by that. And that you can the 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 so you can like kind of save apparently I haven't even gotten to a point where you can save you can kind mm -hmm. of save after you beat a boss, but the amount of time it takes to get to that point is is insane. So like you have to sit for like a you have to prepare yourself for a long play session if you want to get somewhere where you can turn the the PlayStation off. Um, the fact that it's permadeath. I shouldn't say that that burdens the gameplay. I don't care that it's permadeath. The permadeathness doesn't matter to me at all. I can't stress that enough. I don't care that it's permadeath. <laughs> I care that it takes so long for your progress to be recorded because I don't have five hours to sit. Like, like so last night I played the game and I was done playing the game. I, I I beat what I thought was a boss, but apparently it was just a mini boss. And I was like, "All right." So I uh -huh. so the chat was like, "Go back to the go back to the ship." So it's like Metroid, where like your ship crashes and you like your ship is like kind of like your home base. All right. So so I I I beat what I thought was the boss, and then the chat's like, "All right, go to your ship and rest and 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 everything." And I'm like, "Okay." So I go to the ship, I rest, I get my health back, whatever. And then I'm like, "All right." So I can turn my system off now, right? And everyone's like, "No, you can't. You have to beat the main boss." And I was like, "I have to beat the main boss." And they're like yes and i was like how long will that how much longer until the main boss and they're like i don't know about another hour or two and i said okay how about i just do this and i turned the system off and i was like i'm never playing this fucking game again <laughs> that's it i spent like three hours yeah and i didn't i still wasn't i still needed another hour or two in order to save the game fuck that i'm not doing it that it, that's it, i again i don't care that it has permadeath i i think that's fine if you want to make the game ultra hard that's totally fine. I care that you can't save the game or come back to it later. There's you can totally make it so that I can uh save my game, turn the console off, turn it back on, load that save and then delete the and then it automatically deletes it so you can only load that save one time, you know? That yeah. doesn't make the game any easier. That just is just considerate because everybody else who's playing the game is leaving their PlayStations on like this is the fucking 90s and we're playing, you know, like like a like freaking uh, a game on our Super Nintendo or something. Yep. So uh, that's just that's that's just also I don't know if you saw this, but people were leaving their consoles on and Housemark pushed an update to Returnal. And everybody's Ooh. games updated while it was in rest mode and and restarted the game automatically. Oh. So people left their consoles on overnight in order to save their progress. The game is 15 hours long, by the way. Okay. <laughs> so everybody left their consoles on to save their progress. Housemark pushed an update and deleted all of their progress. That is my biggest problem with the game is that there's no way to just put the game down. Right. I don't. I don't care that it's permadeath. I can't stress that enough. I don't care because everybody's biggest argument is stop being a bitch. Just get good. It's it's a it's a roguelite. It doesn't matter. No, let me put no. the game down. Yeah, this doesn't sound like a get good thing. This sounds like a a fundamental gameplay flaw. Yeah, not even gameplay. Game design. <clears throat> I mean, I don't know how other games like this work. But I imagine there's got to be an easier way to save your progress than just leaving it on and waiting for the next checkpoint or the next save area or whatnot. Games like Resident Evil Four, any of any of the Resident any of the Resident Evils really, uh, Alien Isolation, those have save points, and you can only save at those points. I, I thought it was like that situation it, where you needed an item in order to save. That's what I thought right. it was. And a game like Alien Isolation, you could, the alien could attack you while you're trying to save your game. Mm -hmm. So it adds that level of tension. 
but there are still safe points all around the level. You can, you know, once you get it, you can go back to it and use it multiple times. You know, you can save your game. It's just there's the danger that the alien could be there. Like, that's still a better solution than what it sounds like Returnal is offering. Also, the game tells you nothing. And, like, there, there's these areas where you can, like, rest and it'll give you your health back. Uh, and right. I went to one of them. And instead of being green, it was red. And I went to it mm-hmm. and it took all of my health and I had a percent left. <laughs> so I was like, what the fuck? And everyone in the chat's like, that's because it was red, dude. And I was like, how about, I was like, no, I just, I just slept in one of these. How was I going to know that? Game didn't tell me that. Anyway, uh, so, so uh, someone in the chat just said this. Uh, Luca Skewy says, even Hades, which is a roguelite, or roguelike, I don't even know. Even Hades has saves for you to close the game mid-run. So I guess you could just pick it up uh, from where you left off, and then uh, yeah. and then it'll delete the save until you find a new save spot. Um, so so the game's really fun, and, and the fact that it's hard is part of the gameplay. Like, when I was fighting hard enemies, I was really stressed out because, like, I didn't want to die. And that, I think, is a big part of the gameplay. But the fact that I, I was done playing, I was like, I'm done. I don't, I, I can't play this anymore. I need to go to bed or something. Um, yeah. Th- and the game's like, you, you can't. You need to keep playing me for another hour or two, or else you, or else that's it. And I was like, okay, that's it. I'm not being held hostage by a video game. <laughs> <laughs> um. So I, again, I like the fact that it's hard. It's good that it's hard. A lot of people are going to love that it's hard. I don't like how it holds you hostage and you can't, you have to sit there for a certain amount of time and you can't turn the console off. It's 2021. There's ways around this. There's technology available to let you save the stupid yeah. game. Um, also, other roguelites uh, aren't as long. I mean, some might be, but this one's already, this one's a long game. Um, and this game's seventy dollars. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know of a roguelike game that is seventy dollars. I can't think of one. The closest thing I I have to compare this to is uh, Demon Souls or Dark Souls because there are like ways. There are shortcuts as you play the game. There are shortcuts where you can get further in the game quicker. Um, right. But not if you die. <laughs> game freaking restarts um yeah the the fact that the, i don't uh, again i can't i struggle to think of another roguelike game that is full retail price 60 or 70 dollars and a lot of people are mad that it runs at I mean, 1080p the game's beautiful the game's gorgeous and, and it apparently it's yeah. it's it's a uh, it's a uh, what do they call it uh it's 4K, but it auto scales to 1080p when stuff's going on, so it almost never runs at 4K. It mostly runs at 1080p, right. but it looks gorgeous. Yeah, I don't think there's anything wrong with it running at 1080p. Uh, the thing is, you could probably put the PS5 on sleep mode, but if you want to play another game, even on Switch, you can't play another game if one game is active. What do you mean, even on Switch? Oh, you mean even on the Switch also has that feature. You yeah. shouldn't have to put this, this the PS5 in rest mode in order to keep a a run alive. There is a functionality that we've had since 1986 called the save. <laughs> <laughs> There's no reason for this to to exist. Yeah. It's it's just deterring people from from wanting to to keep a run having to tur- leave the PlayStation on that's ridiculous just just let me save yeah and then delete the save when I op- when I open it again that's fine that's fine I-, I guess they don't want people to manipulate the save but uh too fucking bad it's it's fucking 2021 but give give me options explain this save to me no <laughs> <laughs> all right i'm done ranting about returnal again it's a great okay. game i think the game the gameplay is actually sick it's it's like it's like demon souls if it was a bullet hell shooter um and it's third person it's really fun it sounds interesting but it's but that's 
the the fact that it's roguelike uh with, with no saves <laughs> or like r impossible saves uh that that really uh, ruins it like i i would have played the whole freaking game if i was able to put the controller down and be able to pick it up today but uh no instead i'm never gonna play it again uh next article let's get let's let's friggin stop right. stop digging a hole for me from all of the roguelike <laughs> fans uh, the PlayStation 5, despite supply issues, is outpacing the PlayStation 4 in terms of sales. Uh, the PlayStation 5 is nowhere, and yet the PlayStation 5 is everywhere. Sony has sold 7.8 million PlayStation 5s since the console's official launch last November, according to a company quarterly earnings call held this month. It's no secret that getting your hands on a PS5 is nearly impossible in parts thanks to the global semiconductor shortage that's affecting production of everything from cars to consoles. Industry analysts believe you might not uh, reasonably be able to pop into your local GameStop and buy a console until this summer or beyond. Don't shop at GameStop. I'm still missing two Ghostbusters. <laughs> <laughs> but somehow, despite the extraordinarily difficult despite the extraordinary difficulty everyone's having finding one the playstation 5 is is selling roughly on pace with the ps4 as vgc points out the ps4 one of the buzziest best-selling consoles of all time sold 200,000 fewer units than the ps5 in its first six months of availability in today's call sony cfo hiroki totoki uh, said the said that the company plans to outpace the PS4 second year figures of 14.8 million consoles, but was clear that the company likely won't be able to produce more consoles than that despite um, stratospheric demand. Oh, that's so, it. yeah. Um, so this happened with uh, the Nintendo Switch. It was impossible to find it within the first year, but it was selling gangbusters. So I mean, yeah. It was, you know, people were getting it, even if it was. But you know, there wasn't a semiconductor shortage in the global pandemic back then. Correct. So it's it's really boggling my mind that it's outpacing the PS4 so much. I mean, not that much, but like enough that it's, you know, keeping pace. Like it's very close. What what the fuck do I want to say? It's outpacing <laughs> the PS4. That's understood. It's not by much, but it is. But the fact that it's even close to what the PS4 is doing, given the current state of the world, it is shocking. It's, that's the shocking part to me. I feel like most of it is hype beast culture, Will. I feel like people just want a PlayStation 5 because it's it's look i got the playstation 5 it's like a it's like a it's like buying a brick of gold it's fucking and I know, useless and, you know, I know, <laughs> and i know somebody who did that <laughs> what just to say i got it basically he, like he bought it and he's like now what do i do <laughs> i sent him all your videos on what to do i don't know if he's doing anything with it so uh, some someone in the chat is someone in the chat called me out for my PS5 collecting dust. Uh, and listen! Oh, Knucker. Meanwhile, Boss PS5 collects dust. Yeah, I, I blew the dust off of the controller yesterday to play uh, Returnal. Was it yesterday? Yeah, to play Returnal. And uh, then I played Returnal. So it will collect dust for a little longer. Here's another thing, Will. I was reminded yeah. why, I, why I have problems with the PlayStation 5. I, I freaking put the disc in for Returnal. It took an hour to copy the data off of the disc uh -huh. uh, it's 60 gigabytes you know that's kind of a lot um yeah and then it didn't automatically update the game will i had to select oh. to update the game and then it took another like half an hour to update the game and then once it was done downloading the update it had to copy all of the files which was an additional timer that it added so that happened to me with Mortal Kombat X. <laughs> on what? On PS4. Mm -hmm. So this is this is nothing new. This is an, the ever ongoing problem with PlayStation consoles. So, 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 so the Xbox also needs to copy games. So I'm I'm yes. not saying this is a problem unique to PlayStation. However, the Xbox will automatically update the game at the same time. You put the disc. I put the disc in my Xbox 
and I walk away. I make lunch, I have a little coffee, and then I come back and I'm ready to play. On PlayStation, I put the disc in, it goes, oh, you weren't here. I went to sleep. Yes. Nothing happened. You got to do it all over again. You weren't watching me. So, anyway, yay. I'm glad I'm glad the PlayStation 5 is selling a lot of consoles. <laughs> Good for Sony. That's great. This is this is a this is the shit on Sony uh, 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 podcast. I will say, Returnal has great Dual Sense uh, uh, stuff. The, the, it's I've freaking, heard that's the best part. It's vibrating the whole time. It's doing all these little sorts of things, and it is actually awesome. It like is great for immersion. It's dumb that Nintendo never utilized uh, uh, their uh, HD Rumble as much because they totally could have, and they yeah. just completely dropped the ball on it. Um. Yeah, it it did a, it did a, it does a really good job with that. So I like that about the PlayStation Five. Yeah. Um, I also like that it has some exclusives, but uh, you know, I, I'm still gonna play my Xbox way more. I have a better I have a better overall user experience with the Xbox. I'm sorry. Yes. And really, all I ever play is a uh, friggin' uh, Warzone anyway. Yeah. Um, I really have to pee, so I'm gonna go do that. Good. I'll read the next uh, article. The next article, speaking of which, is about the Queen's Wii. Oh, good. And it's gold. Her gold Wii. <laughs> First, thank you, Treville, for gifting a sub to Seth, last witness. Uh, and SS Cribis, thank you for the Prime subscription. Now, this, this news broke last Wednesday, so it was the day after uh, the podcast. I thought this was older than that this is this is old news so that's why it's at the end a, a golden we made for queen elizabeth is now for sale uh i'm not gonna read the whole article this it was i think it was three hundred thousand dollars oh wait is it off of ebay maybe it's done oh buy it now three hundred thousand dollars nobody wants it um 24 karat golden nintendo wii that was made for queen elizabeth ii so i looked into this a little bit it is it was made as a promotional stunt for big family games, a THQ, a THQ Wii shovelware game. I guess they just made a golden Wii and shipped it to Queen Elizabeth as a promotional stunt with the game. This is how much money Wii shovelware was able to make. Um, the Queen likely never received the console as outlined in this excellent episode of People Make Games, but it did eventually find its way into the hands of collector Donnie Fillerup. That is... That's quite a name. One of the guys behind the website uh, consolevariations.com, which I wrote about back in 2019. Donnie, who is now moving on with life, what? And looking to buy a new place, is putting parts of his collection up for sale, and the headline item is, of course, this notorious 24 karat gold Wii, which is placed on eBay for $300,000. That's unfortunate that he's selling his, his collection. consolevariations.com what? Oh, I've, I've been here before. Um, does it come with the pillow? I don't. I mean, you know what? Three hundred thousand dollars. It it better come with a uh, friggin' the the queen herself. All right. Now we're just looking at consolevariations.com. Okay. Oh, this one has a bunch of stickers on it. Cool. <laughs> Um, yes, yeah, so um, that was the, a, did you know gaming actually just did an art that did a video on rare console variations? Did you see this was created for uh, as a promotional stunt for big family games for the Wii? Yes, that I knew. That's dumb. All right, next news every Activision <laughs> studio working for Call of Duty. Yep, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, uh, the, the biggest news about this is that toys for bob the studio who developed uh crash bandicoot skylanders and i and they did the spyro trilogy right um they're an activision studio yeah. that yeah. uh is now uh they announced that they're working on uh they're working on, as support for call of duty warzone which is yeah terrible news if you're if you're a fan of crash uh spyro or skylanders however yeah. 
as a Warzone player, <laughs> Warzone needs a lot of help. So, uh, uh, yeah, so uh, here's the breakdown. Toys for Bob is working on Warzone Season 3 content. Raven Software has been a support studio for Call of Duty since 2010. Activision Shanghai is working on Call of Duty Online. Demonware does server support for Call of Duty. Uh, High Noon Studios helps support Call of Duty. Beanox has been working on Call of Duty since Black Ops 3. Infinity Ward, Treyarch, and Sledgehammer have been taking turns developing Call of Duty games the last decade. So, um, I want to note that Raven, Raven saw... Uh, most of this is Warzone. Um, Ravensoft is, I think, the main developer now of Warzone. Because they're right. the ones who are always tweeting about Warzone stuff. Yeah. Um, so, I, I went on the uh, uh, of Duty Warzone. I went on the Warzone Wikipedia. And... Uh, so developers, this is Infinity Ward, Raven Software, Treyarch, and then B Knox, and then there's a little like A. It says additional work by High Noon Studio, High Moon Studios, Sledgehammer Games, Toys for Bob, which they just added, and Activision yeah. Shanghai. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight studios for Call of Duty Warzone alone. <laughs> I don't think and Fortnite has that many. <laughs> nope. Because I don't think, you know, no game needs that many. <laughs> I think that the fact that there's that many studios working together is part of the reason why the game has so many problems. Oh, definitely. Yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely a case of too many cooks in the kitchen. You know, you got all these developers all around the world trying to work on one i mean ubisoft does this with their assassin's creed games and that and that has led to a lot of problems with a lot of them mm. uh meta session says does warzone get that much new content no uh, they just <laughs> released a really big update that actually added a lot of stuff and it's like the first time they actually added a lot of stuff um but otherwise no they really don't ever update the game that much uh, they add yeah. new guns every once in a while and skins and stuff. Uh, I, they need a lot of help with bug fixes because the game's pretty broken. Uh, there's a lot of weird, dumb stuff that the game like doesn't allow you to do. It's 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 weird. Yeah. Um, a big update that Bob hasn't streamed yet. Yo, blame Greg and Jerry because they moved on to Apex. They gave up Warzone. <laughs> One of the biggest problems with Warzone right now is that um when the game first started it took a while to to kill somebody the time to kill was pretty high because it's regular yeah. call of duty but they add armor on top of it um as the game moved on they added new guns and, and now there's all the cold war guns and stuff now the time to kill is really short because there's a lot of guns that are really powerful and they just never right. nerfed them so now the it's like playing a whole nother game you can just down somebody in like in less than a second um Anyway, uh, yeah, so Activision is just all, all, all hands on deck for specifically. Everything. I mean, that, specific, this article I mean, is talking Call about of Call of Duty in general, but specifically Warzone. Yeah, this article is talking about Call of Duty in general, but Warzone is the culprit here. Warzone is, is a lot of the, the problem. Yeah. I'd imagine Warzone is making an insane amount of money. Um, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I, I I don't. I I understand, but also at the same time, like, let's make let's let's make some new. Uh, well, they just made Crash Bandicoot yeah. Four, so right. And their reward for making Crash Bandicoot Four was to be absorbed into a call <laughs> the Call of Duty machine. This is they, what happens with at Activision. There are two scenarios for like a, a game development studio at Activision. Either you get absorbed into another uh, studio, most likely to do Call of Duty, or in vicarious visions case to go uh work on the diablo 2 remake over at blizzard or they shut you down yeah like with, no questions asked a big this problem. is the lesser of the two evils yes at least people are still working yeah a big problem with 
game studios is that uh especially if you're under a big publisher once you yeah. publish the game once the game's out and you finish doing the updates and whatever uh you're just you, you can get turned over you can get fired you can just get laid yeah. off because they don't need you anymore there's like a there's like a grace period in between games where uh, yeah. you're not you're not working on anything so uh in the case of toys for bob or in the case of activision they have all of these workers that aren't working on anything or they could be working on a new game for uh for whatever franchises they were already working on but uh activision sees it more uh sees a better monetary value for getting them to work on whatever the cash cow is right now uh it doesn't mean that in the future we won't get crash bandicoot or or uh or spyro or whatever we do need a new spyro game but yeah. uh I think this is better than laying off a bunch of people from Toys for Bob while they then well, while they then gear up for the next Spyro or Crash game. Well, I don't understand cuz like Crash Bandicoot came back to you know good success. Like people were happy that Crash came back. As far as I know the games did very well monetarily. Same thing with Spyro. Tony Hawk was like the <laughs> One of the biggest game. No, don't laugh. I'm fucking serious here. <laughs> Tony Hawk was like one of the biggest games of last year. It was critically acclaimed across the board. There was so much goodwill and hype around it. It must have sold very, very well because it's dumbasses like me. And the reward for these studios is to, you know, not immediately get to work on the next one. It's just to, you know, you got to make the Diablo 2 remake or the Call of Duty machine needs more hands. Like that's ridiculous. It, that's not a sustainable model. It, it's again. It's it's it it's the problem is that the alternative is probably firing half the people at the studio. So I giving them all that. something to do, I think, is uh, it sucks that it has to be Call of Duty. Uh, but I mean. I, I I don't think this is going to be a long term thing. I think they're going to be working on season three stuff, and then maybe they'll be transitioned over. I hope to it's not a long term thing because 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 I think they'll they'll start working on the next Spiral or Crash Bandicoot or like some people there might be working on stuff like that, and then right. once they're able to pass it on to the rest of the studio, they'll be moved out from Call of Duty. Maybe they'll already publish season three of Warzone, and then they'll be moved back into their own environment making the fun games. Hopefully, hopefully that's the scenario. Well, because, you know, Raven, Raven Software has made games like Soldier of Fortune, Jedi Outcast, Jedi Academy, Marvel Ultimate Alliance. And since 2010, they've just been making Call of Duty stuff. <laughs> uh, High, New High Moon Studios made two excellent Transformers games and a very well-received Deadpool game that they were able to make despite Activision actively trying to sabotage it and they have to make call of duty for the rest of their life <laughs> uh like what i'm saying is just be, when they start making call of duty that's it that's what they're doing for the rest of their i don't know, think toys for bob is, is only going to be making call of duty i think that they'll be moved on to something else eventually i just think that they're they're a studio that's in a lull right now because they they did what they they, they just published some stuff um anyway hi beat em ups <laughs> how you doing well how's your podcast over there how's everybody doing from yeah. the beat em ups podcast that is at the same time as our podcast and it's all wood's fault uh how are you all doing here uh thanks for coming i hope you had a good time over there and i hope you continue to have a good time over here we're allowed to say fuck here and we've said it a lot today yeah um Y'all sound mad. That's just welcome, dude. That's just yeah. <laughs> we've been we've been ornery since the start of this podcast. Yeah, mostly because I was holding in pee. <laughs> yes. Well, I mean that didn't help too much. Uh, yeah. I'm trying to find a list of what Raven Software made. Uh, small dog mob cheating is the biggest problem in Warzone. That is also true. They don't have any anti cheat software at all. There's zero way to detect if people are using an uh, cheat software in Call of Duty Warzone. Uh, other than just being reported. And then if you get reported, there's no IP bans, so these people just make new accounts. I mean, this is a problem in, like, every online game, though. Uh, my father-in-law 
saw a news story on TV about how cheating in online games is rampant. Uh, it, if I mean, my che- father-in-law knows about this, then it's a big deal. Cheating is a big deal in every online game, yes. However, <laughs> every online game has a team that actively fights against all of the cheat software that's happening. Well, not necessarily, because, like, what is it? Team Fortress 2 has a massive cheating problem. And that's a team-based game, and not not even people on the same team can, like, work together to take out the cheater. What was the big one? Punk Buster? That was the big one back in the day when I used back to play Rainbow day, yeah. Six. There was Punk Buster. Every, yeah. every game had Punk Buster, and if you couldn't run Punk Buster, you couldn't play the game at all. Um... That was just like a software that ran on your computer, I think, that detected if you had any sort of cheat software. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not saying every game has has good ways to detect cheats, but Call of Duty has zero way to detect yeah. uh, cheat software at all, um, which is a big problem. Um, well, uh, for, Valorant does it. Fortnite does it. Like, I don't understand why Call of Duty isn't actively trying to find a way. Because because there's a cheater in every freaking game. There's 150 people yeah. in, a, in a Call of Duty Warzone game. So there's going to be a cheater in every single game. Um, anyway. Last news. PlayStation partners with Discord. Yay! A good, a positive PlayStation uh, uh, story. <laughs> uh, Sony Interactive Entertainment announced that PlayStation has entered a new partnership with Discord, the popular communication service widely used by gamers and more than 140 million people per month globally, including us right now to do this podcast. Wow. Sony, Sony made a minority investment as part of Discord's Series H round and is now working on connecting Discord with PlayStation Network social and gaming experience. This initiative, starting early next year, will bring both services closer together on console and mobile. Players will be will then be able to communicate and interact with each other more easily. From our very first conversation with co-founders Jason uh, Citron and Stan Vishnevsky, nailed it. Nailed it. I was inspired by their lifelong love for gaming and our team's shared passion to help bring friends and communities together in new ways, says um, Sony President and CEO Jim Ryan. Uh, empowering players to create communities and enjoy shared gaming experiences is at the heart of what we do. So we are beyond excited uh, to share this journey with one of the world's most popular communication services. Interestingly, last month, Sony was uh, sorry. Last month, Microsoft was reportedly in talks to purchase discord for outright for $10 billion, much more than what it paid for ZeniMax and Bethesda However, it does not look like that deal came to fruition. I think that deal would have been more than just a gaming thing. It would have it's basically Slack. Discord is basically just a better Slack. Yeah. And does Microsoft don't Slack? Do I don't think so. All right. Slack company. Cuz I just assumed they would try to use Discord to replace Skype. Microsoft ruined Skype. Yes. <laughs> but also, they could have used Discord as a big Skype competitor. I mean, I'm sorry, as yeah. a big uh, uh, Slack competitor. Um, Microsoft could have used Discord in a lot more ways than just gaming. Um, I use Discord every time I play a game online with people, mm. uh, which is kind of a pain in the ass because if they don't have a, a PC console setup, it's a pain in the ass to talk through Discord. Like, imagine if we wanted to play a game together, Will, how would you talk to me through Discord? Like, if you wanted to play a game on PS5 or 4 or whatever. Uh, I'd probably have to, like, hook up my phone or my computer. And then you would have Discord. two sets of audio sources, right? Yeah. You'd have two sets of headphones, kind of. Yeah, um, basically. Yeah, it's a pain in the ass. So having yeah. Discord on a console would solve everything. Um, when I first saw this article, I was like, great big deal microsoft already partnered with with discord like two years ago and all it did was give us if i'm playing warzone on my xbox it shows up on my discord tells everybody that i'm playing warzone it doesn't let me talk to people on my xbox however this seems to say that you'll be able to talk to people uh on your playstation 5 through discord which is freaking huge that's huge news 
Also weird because we know PlayStation doesn't like to partner with people unless it's hugely beneficial to them. And uh, there's uh, PlayStation already has, I think, a great. I mean, it's not good quality the 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 audio, but they have a great party system on PlayStation. I mean, yeah, it works works well. Yeah, so I, I don't. I don't know. Can you hear everybody? Yelling and screaming. There is a party going on outside. There is a party going on outside. I don't know what's happening. Um. So yeah, I, it's it's a it's a weird move for Sony, but it's a great pro consumer thing for everybody else. I think this is going to be a big deal yes. for everybody. It would be even better if yes. Nintendo got on board because they desperately need help with their yeah. chat services because their stuff is garbo. Um, Sony cock blocking Microsoft. No, this is good news. I think this means Microsoft will be on board. Unless maybe PlayStation well, made a deal with Discord, like you can't have Microsoft <laughs> be a part of this. We want exclusivity. Maybe. I mean, Microsoft does pay Sony a Blu ray licensing fee to put Blu ray drives into the Xbox. So they're not above paying whatever licensing fee to Sony in order to get something to make the Xbox the best system it can be. Yeah. Yeah. That I'm just wondering if there's like a, there's like a clause that's like, we are the exclusive discord partner. You know, I feel like if there was, that would have said so in the article in the news announcement. Uh, It could be a timed thing. It could be something they don't want to publicly say. Yeah. I don't know. Because after after I'm I'm now jaded by all of the Epic Game documents that we <laughs> that we learned about. Yeah. Um. Anyway, that's it. One of the things I didn't post because it's not related to anything we were talking about. One of the things leaked in the Epic vs. Apple uh, court case was somebody at Apple, high up at Apple, suggested putting iMessage on Android. And that was shot down because they don't want iMessage on low quality Android phones <laughs> that parents give to kids. They want parents to get their kids iPhones. That's that's a weird way to put that. Why do we have yep. to bring kids in it at all? I, I don't know, man. <laughs> that's weird. Oh, I guess like because it's cheap, you can instead of getting an iPhone to talk to your kids, yeah, you, you could yeah, because you know I don't want to get my kid an, an iPhone twelve. I'll get them just a cheap Android phone to knock around with until they're old enough to buy their own phone. Well, that's the, that's their argument is that uh, they want you to spend the extra money instead of getting a cheap little thing. Yeah, that's that's a, just a weird way to put it though. Um, yeah, I mean make it cost like 10 bucks <laughs> you know like that <laughs> would make them so much money yeah but i guess people will buy it there is no good text messaging app on android i'll be honest my one, though, friend, I, I, one of my friends who uses android uses whatsapp i'll be honest i would be out of the apple ecosystem if it wasn't for uh if, if they put iMessage on android i'm not buying the next iphone i'm buying a freaking pixel <laughs> i'm not i'm not so yeah. maybe they're maybe they're right to 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 keep us in their walled garden yeah um so much better here it's not the <laughs> notification system on android is so much better it's a light years better because yeah, you know but... what, the notification stays there until you touch it. On iPhone, it just go, it just it just it just dissolves. The notification just dissolves sometimes. Okay. Counterpoint: the new update for iOS allows you to, if you're wearing a mask, you know, Face ID can't scan your face. But if you own an Apple Watch, you can unlock it with <laughs> your Apple Watch. You just wanted to bring up the Apple Watch. Of course I wanted to bring up the Apple Watch because it's great and you are a loser for not getting on board this train. You know how I feel about Face ID and Touch ID and all that stuff. You know you know my stance yes. on that, right? Yes, I know your stance I leave all that. my stuff open because the security for my phone is right here. If you touch my phone, I'll fucking break your nose. No one's touching Here's the this thing. thing. It's right in my pocket the- at all times. I never leave it anywhere. 
on, honest to God, the only reason why I have Face ID enabled is because I started using the Apple Wallet, mm-hmm. and you need touch any Face ID and previously Touch ID to use it. And because Apple Wallet is very convenient, very easy to use, and if the, having to use Face ID is the price I have to pay, I'm willing to pay it because it's so convenient. It's just tap. It is really annoying it. not having Touch ID when uh, you try to log in somewhere with a saved password and it goes, "You need Touch ID to do that." That's yeah. so annoying. I don't know why. Why do I need Touch ID? I I I want to live free. Let people try yeah. to try to steal my phone. Um. Anyway, how did we get here? <laughs> <laughs> That's all the news. We're late. Yes. Let's do. Everybody's favorite. Quit of the week! Quit of the week! Quit of the week! It's Tweet of the Week time. This is from All Wednesday right. LA. I lost my job at Party City and it's... <laughs> it's the painting of Saturn eating his son. But it's made out of balloons. <laughs> <laughs> I don't... This was like a while ago too. April 29th. I had to uh, save for that long. I thought this was very funny. <laughs> that is good. Anyway. Uh, now we will talk to you people. As always... Uh, if you left a comment on last week's Wolf Den Podcast over on the YouTube channel, Wolf Den Podcast, this is the part of the show we will answer you. And of course, ladies and gentlemen watching us at home, please start leaving your questions and comments because we will get to them when we are done with everybody else. Uh, last week's Wolf Den Live uh, on the YouTube, we have a comment from Melon who says, come for the games and comics discussion, stay for the pancake and waffle discourse. I ordered a Belgian waffle at IHOP once and never looked back. <laughs> they basically are just crispy IHOP pancakes with the fixins. Excuse me? Are that you is telling true. me I can get a Cinestack waffle? I don't think you can. They're very stringent with their waffles at IHOP because they are the International House of Pancakes. That is true chaotic good if you're ordering waffles at the International House of Pancakes. I I need a response from Melon to let me know if they got fixins on this waffle and what they were. They do have very good plain waffles at IHOP. But that's the like problem. Your, your regular waffles. That's the problem that we have. I'm going to tell them to shut up in two seconds. I'm getting mad. <laughs> uh that's the problem that we that was the whole reason that, that that i have problem with waffles is that people don't put fixins on them yeah anyway gore uh, got gore got says waffles are 3d printed pancakes wrong <laughs> i disagree true. with this uh no i they're they're 3d pancakes we're not printing these waffles Nah, I guess not. Psycho, Psycho Delirious. Why are these all waffle comments? <laughs> Psycho Delirious. Will it waffle with Will Wolf would be a fantastic channel. Let's make it a segment. Get that waffle iron in that room with you. Yeah. <laughs> Have you seen my waffle iron? No. Is it? Is it, it disgusting? It's very big. Oh. Is it one of those like, like it, ones that you get at like a like a like a like a a, a breakfast buffet type thing that like rotates oh, and everything no it's not one of those it's literally just like a press but it's gigantic are the waffles gigantic no the waffles are that the waffles are like that big so why is it, it so four, big it makes four of them uh uh keyhole says i'm just i'm trying to justify the pikachu printer and pokemon snap but good god that's so much money to tackle my to tickle my nostalgia pickle all right keyholes you just you went a little you went a little overboard there with the end there um it is too much money i'm telling you right now it is too much money and i don't think you could justify it i'm letting you know right now it's cool looking and it is tempting but i don't i i can't i can't help you justify all of that mx woods 3 says bob and will when you're you're making your videos 
and reach free up storage space oh shoot <laughs> when you're making your videos and reading from a script you made do you use a teleprompter i always find it crazy how you guys can just read from a script and make it seem so natural see there's some there's some movie magic there's going on a lot there. of movie magic uh that's what uh, jump cuts are for yes that's <laughs> the way we we have our scripts printed out, like not printed out uh written on our iphone or in my case i use an ipad and in between all those cuts we pick it up we read the line and then we say it again <laughs> like yes. out loud you should uh, uh so uh, you should talk to e or ian about that because they they have been the ones now who are cutting all of my a roll so the a roll is just a long strip of me or will talking about you know it's just us reading from the script and, and yeah and they have to cut all of the sections of us reading from our phones or screwing up the take and doing yeah. it over again so um yeah um if it's if it's a if it's a part that we know is voiceover then we'll just read it like we won't yes. like read it and memorize it we'll just read the damn thing um teleprompters are shockingly expensive so so i know people who read from a teleprompter uh and I, yeah no i do too yeah so there's there's i have two takes on a teleprompter uh well first of all it's expensive there are some yeah. cheap options um but they're not that cheap they're still like 300 yeah. um yeah that's what i mean but uh, two takes one uh you have to be incredible at reading off of a teleprompter mm. two there's a lot of people who swear by teleprompters and they read off a teleprompter and they sound like they're reading off of a teleprompter <laughs> so that's what i'm against i i think that i am good at First of all, I'm writing the script, so it's already coming from my voice. Yeah. I think I'm good at reading it, putting it in my brain, and then saying it in my own words. Um, yeah. Reading off of a teleprompter, uh, I think everybody will be able to tell that I'm reading off a teleprompter. Unless I become good at it, but I don't think I can. Like, uh, like yeah. John Oliver, like he could read off of a teleprompter yeah. for a whole 30 minutes, and he'll be really good at it. I don't think yeah. I could do that. It, reading off a teleprompter, like that's a skill that you have to learn. Yeah. It's not something you can just do, especially because like a lot of teleprompters will scroll the text up, and if you're not fast enough, you'll miss it. Yeah. So so, so Linus Tech Tips reads off of a teleprompter in a lot of his yeah. videos, and you'll see him reach for his hip while he's first of all you can tell he's reading off a teleprompter you can see his eyes scrolling and the way he's yeah talking. that's, that's he's, another thing a lot of people read off teleprompter you can see their eyes move yeah he's clearly reading yeah. off of a teleprompter uh yeah. but also every once in a while he'll reach for his hip and he's doing that because he has a remote control for the teleprompter and he's scrolling to the next to the next yeah. line even though he's got a whole team of people they could just do that for him yeah. maybe he stopped doing that i don't know but that he was doing that for a really long time um so we're pretty much against teleprompters here. We, uh, I think, if if you're doing your own script, just do it line by line, and you can do jump cuts. It's fine. I'm not. I wouldn't say I'm against like against teleprompters. Might might be the wrong word. It's it's not for us. I'm against it for me. I is, is what was what I meant. I, I'm not against okay. it for other people. Yeah. I think other people. Some people are incredible at it yeah um, and, i think if you yeah. like it and you and you and you enjoy using it and it helps you and you have the money for it because like we said even the cheap ones are kind of expensive then by all means for us and this is even cheaper you just write it down and then in between takes you read the next line there's also people who don't write videos down who just to just yeah. go off the cuff and uh i don't like that because i will forget uh to say something uh, i will forget yeah. a, a point and i'll be pissed about it and i'll have to like go back and do it um yeah. mkbhd uh, i think does bullet points and he just goes off the cup but he's really yeah. good at it uh i i like to write everything i like to put all my thoughts down on paper first and figure the whole video out and then and then talk about it which takes a yeah. long time um yeah and that's why i only do one video a week i had a, another video in the pipeline to follow up mm -hmm. to my justice league video and I, it was another off the cuff video, and one of the reasons why it hasn't been posted yet is that I hated the way it came out, <laughs> being unscripted. Uh... And by the time I was going to, because it was it was just a little mini tour of the set, as it were. And by the time I was ready to, you know, 
go back and shoot B-roll for it to try and salvage it, I changed my basement. I added a display case. Mm -hmm. So rather than do that again, I'm, I'm scrapping it. I'm writing a script on the Kickstarter spawn figure, an actual script so that I can, you know, do it properly because I want to do it fucking properly. And so hopefully I'll have the script done this week, start filming next week and, you know, be able to plan it out and make a good video rather than, you know, just a, you know, shoddily put together thing. Right. So. Well, we, we, we have a standard here at the Wolf Den. Yes. <laughs> Otherwise, it would just be us talking in front of a green screen doing daily videos. Yeah. Um, which, again, there's nothing wrong with that either. Doing daily videos is a whole different type of uh, type of work. Yeah. Everybody's putting a lot of work into their videos. It's just priorities. What is the work that yeah. they're putting in? Anyway, here's your, here's your frick. You got a Breville Smart Waffle yeah. Pro? I, I did uh, not know they made waffle makers. My wife got this for me, I think, for Father's Day last year. Listen, Why this is a great, LCD screen. This is a great waffle iron. I love this thing. It makes excellent Holy waffle. Crap, dude. This is this is a this is a bad bitch. Let me tell you. <laughs> That's as much as their as their coffee grinder. Yeah. Uh. Th yeah, this waffle iron. This is not for messing around. This is. This is a legit, like, thing. Like, if you're going to make waffles... I, I made waffles for, like, a year straight. This looks like it makes the diner-type waffles, the big, fluffy ones. That's what this looks like. It does. It does make good, big, fluffy ones. It also makes nice, crispy ones, depending on your setting. Uh, I've made hash browns in this by just pouring tater tots into it <laughs> pressing down. <laughs> they come out really good. Why does it have an LCD screen, and can it play Tenet? Um... I don't know if it can play Tenet. It has an LCD screen because that's what uh, the settings. Mm -hmm. You can you can set the temp the color temperature. You can set if it's a uh, color temperature. So whether you want light or dark waffles. So uh -oh. spoiler alert: it has like Belgian setting, classic setting, chocolate waffle setting, buttermilk waffle setting, or custom setting. That's just the time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But again, the thing is huge. It's like 15 inches by uh, 12 inches by five inches. And it weighs a ton. <laughs> uh, what's your mix of choice, Will? Um, from, my, from the Waffle Iron book that I showed last week, it's uh, buttermilk, flour, cornmeal, uh, Corn egg meal. yolks. Yeah. Oh, wait, so you're making the, the batter yourself. I'm making the whole thing from scratch. Oh, dude, you're you're yeah. you're into this, man. Yeah. yeah I'm not gonna mess around with it. And it the recipe requires not not eggs. You have to separate the yolks from the egg whites mm -hmm. and you have to beat the egg whites to soft peaks. Do not do that by hand. Get yourself <laughs> a an electronic egg beater because you will be there all goddamn day. I would like to note that Breville, the company that makes this uh, waffle iron, also makes my espresso machine. They so. also make my toaster oven and my uh, electronic tea kettle that you got me. Uh, We're a Breville yeah. household here. Yeah, Breville household. Very um, good. Very nice. I didn't, Very get their, I didn't get their grinder because their grinder apparently sucks. But uh, uh, I'm happy with my espresso machine. Anyway, now we're in the now we're in the chat. We got in the chat. Yeah, we got uh, Travel gifting a sub to Addy KM and also to Silent Mongoose. Thank you, Travel. He has given he's gifted like four hundred subs in the past week. And Mecha Dragon with forty bits. Man, respect. Man, respect for Bob for caring about the people he might influence with his ads. Unlike other podcasters that will do whatever ad falls in their lap. <laughs> Was the wine... I'm not reading this. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> he's, trying, he's trying to get me to throw another creator under the bus. There's nothing wrong with other creators doing an ad for alcohol. I just personally w didn't want to do it myself. Um, right. I don't think it's a problem that other... Uh, I don't think it's a problem that other people do it. They seem to not really care about that. 
also i was thinking about it and like somebody asked me would you drink on stream and i was like yeah why not i would drink on stream i also don't get drunk so like it's not a big right. deal to me but that's kind of influencing people right i guess it's different than getting <laughs> getting paid thousands of dollars to shill in alcohol yeah because if like you're just having a beer on stream that's like not much different than like having it like a drink any old drink but i guess it's different than being like buy this now and here's a coupon yeah, code that's an advertisement yeah. yeah uh anyway anyway uh you have had a drink on stream i have yes i have has Bob not done Raycons? Everybody keeps saying that. Whenever an ad gets brought, whenever like me doing ads gets brought up, Raycon gets brought up. I turned Raycon down because I don't like wireless headphones. And also, I think I tweeted something snarky about Raycons once. <laughs> so I was like, I can't do it because because uh, of this. Yeah. Um, uh, now people are just asking us about Breville stuff. Eric Henley, do they make air fryers? Uh, according according to the website they don't make like your traditional air fryers but they do make like combination toaster oven air fryers like they're basically toaster ovens with air fryer functionality i went on a whole rant about air fryers on stream one time and i think it was because we had just had dinner and you were talking about your air fryer mm -hmm. and so mom was like how is your air fryer you said it will change your life <laughs> The, the problem the the only problem with owning an air fryer is that you become an air fryer bro air fryer bro immediately right right all you do is talk about how great your air fryer is how you cook <laughs> everything in air fryers <laughs> you only hang out with people who own air fryers and you talk about how much you love your air fryer and if your friend doesn't own an air fryer you're no longer friends with them i think ian was all no ian was trying to get me to get he was trying to get me to get a crock pot I was like, why do I need a crock pot? He was like, it'll change everything, dude. You got to get a crock pot. Why do I got to get a crock pot? I don't need a crock pot. I don't need to have a crock pot in my house. I have a crock pot. I think I've used it once. <laughs> I understand the appeal. I, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do that. I don't need it in my life. Yeah. I'm fine. I sh what I should have said back was, you need an espresso machine. You need to buy a five hundred dollars espresso machine and start making yeah. all of your espresso yourself. Don't go to the coffee shop. It'll change your life. It'll change your life. Not everybody needs that. When is the household appliance channel coming, Will? <laughs> you should just you should just complete just left turn and upload a video of you making waffles. I, should... I think I'm making waffles this weekend, so I might have to film that. Can you do a Breville ad? Eric, clip this out and send it to Breville and tell Please. them tell them uh Tell them we're big fans, and uh, yeah. we, we we have a big opportunity for, for them. <laughs> um, Will, did you like Falcon and the Winter Soldier? Says Tiny Carrot. I did, I did. I thought it was very good. Is thought it, it over? Thought it ended nicely. <laughs> oh, it is over. How many episodes? Yeah, only six. I need to watch it. I'm terrible. Yeah, yeah. It, you can you can do that in a weekend. It's real easy to watch. I don't have another video coming out till next Thursday, so I'm like on a little mini vacation. There Although you go. not really, I got to do my taxes. I'm late on my taxes. <laughs> oh yeah, it's gonna be a problem. I get I get the last dose of my vaccine on Friday, then I'll be then I'll be unstoppable. I'll be able to spit. There you go. You go great. lick so many surfaces. Yes. Bob, do a video making coffee in his personal shower, right? Uh, I didn't. I I made the coffee Coke. Will, what upcoming movie are you hyped for? Says Nucker. Uh, none. <laughs> yeah, I know. There's like really nothing. <laughs> it really isn't. I mean, I'm trying to. I'm trying now. I'm just trying to think of what's coming to HBO Max. Cause that's like the only movies I'm gonna see because they're, they're coming day and date. I don't, the Suicide Squad's coming out. That actually looks very good. Um, I'm not seeing Black Widow. I'm not paying the thirty dollars to see Black Widow on Disney Plus. I will wait for that to be free with my Disney Plus subscription. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, I want to see it. I'm just not going to pay thirty bucks for it. 
Uh, Chris BX says rice cookers are also amazing. I kind of want a rice cooker, but uh, All right, time yes. I have a rice cooker. I try using it once. I haven't used it since because I'm I don't know how it works. <laughs> You just put a little water in it and it makes the rice. That's I it. did. It wouldn't cook. It took like two hours and it still wasn't done. I think you, you definitely put too much water in them. That's what it sounds like. It, I followed the instructions. So I kind of want one, but then I discovered... Oh, God, Trevor just gifted another million subs. I kind of want a rice cooker, but then I discovered that you can get rice that you just put in the microwave and it immediately makes white rice. So yeah, I just started doing I, that, and then I can make fried rice from there. I I I, I cut out the middleman basically, and I don't yeah, need a freaking appliance. I, I just house. I start buying minute rice, and that's great. It's literally a cup of rice, a cup of water. Uh, yeah. you boil the water. You pour the rice in, let it sit for five minutes, then fluff. I have the minute rice, Fantastic. except except you put it in the microwave and you don't you don't touch it. It just you don't even you add, need to add water. In, you can put this in the microwave. I just think it turns out better on the stove. I, I didn't know I could put it on the stove. That's good to know. Yeah. Uh, Travel, thanks for gifting 10 subs. Travel has now gifted... Uh, 370 subs to the channel. Jesus Christ. I watched... Before he started this whole trend, I had mm -hmm. 400 subs. So he's almost doubled the amount of subs that we've had on the show. Um... I have a New York uh, apartment. I don't know if you know this. I got no room for any of this shit. And I, uh, most of it is already taken up by coffee machinery. <laughs> yeah. All right. We're out of here. Thank you for hanging out. Okay. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolf Den Podcast is every single Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolf Den. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on the YouTube channel, Wolf Den Podcast. So go over and subscribe to that so you can watch it on demand whenever you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well because we're also an audio podcast on anchor.fm slash Wolf Den Podcast and your preferred podcast service of choice. No matter where you get your Wolf Den Podcast from, though, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps us with placement on all of those respective platforms. Guys, thanks for being here. I'll be on probably tomorrow night uh, because why not? I don't know what I'll be doing, <laughs> but I'll be hanging out. Uh, maybe tomorrow. You know what? Definitely Thursday. But maybe tomorrow night. I'm going to be on more this week because uh, I got nothing else better to do because uh, I'm trying to take it easy for a little bit until my next video. Uh, yeah. Also, if you didn't see my next video, I'm going to put it in the chat right here. Explanation point video. My la I'm sorry, my last video. Uh, talking about the Pokemon printer. Uh, I think it's a great video and you should go watch it and share it with everybody because uh it hasn't been doing very well <laughs> but it's a good video uh they could be in yes, here please, please help that video because we don't want our mom to remind bob that his videos are failing she literally texted me today so so we had a little family facetime yesterday and yeah. what did she say what did she like, say to me bobby your video's not doing so good yeah i was like thanks and she's like maybe you shouldn't talk about keyboard controllers i was like well i know now mom because the video didn't do good i didn't know that beforehand anyway she texted me today and said something about the video i don't know uh my mom is a real life youtube commenter she really is Anyway, everybody go watch Lee. He is streaming Smash Brothers in an open arena with AJ. Uh, and AJ is also streaming. Um, but I decided to stream uh, to raid Lee because that he will not be expecting it. Uh, also, Travel, thanks again for gifting more subs. I got to go before he, he keeps gifting subs. <laughs> uh, go say hi to Lee and also AJ. Uh, goodbye. Bye. Samus, dude. What can I say? It's Gross. helped. <laughs> it's helped me.